I'm booking a private jet to Tuscany. You tell me? Huh? I really need to get there fast. Who the fuck you think you're talking to? Shut up, little boy. I'm talking to Fredo. Un poco di rispetto. Fredo. <laughs> Sorry, Al. There was someone disturbing me. So I was telling you about Airwolf Jet Services. They're friends of ours. The best. Amazing service. You should check them out now, www.airwolfjetservices.com Are you looking for a good fight? Check out the fight pay-per-view schedule. Watch on the biggest screen in the house. Watch the fight tonight, MMA, boxing, pro wrestling, live on pay-per-view. Just tap play and pick a screen to watch on. Playback shifts instantly to the screen of your choice. No hardware, no hassle. Download the Fight app and start watching today. Well, welcome one and welcome all to V3 Fight. This is exciting. The house is packed. Well, here we go. Knockout. Oh. Oh, oh. Pretty electric, man. People are on their feet. This is your main event. Wow. Let me hear you make Up some noise. Fight. Here we go. Nice takedown. Oh, wow. Now he's in a full mount. He's raining down elbows. Let's see if they touch gloves. Look wow. at that. That's a nice takedown. Trying to finish here. Right over. Ladies and gentlemen, declaring your winner. It's staying undefeated. Everyone here just got to witness V3 history. A sport that bridges generations. Live everywhere. Fight gives you instant access to live pay-per-view and free combat sports programs. Check out our combat sports schedule at fight.tv. Fight. Start watching.
Can you feel the power? Yes, I can. I hope you can, too. Welcome to the MMA Power Hour. We have a fantastic show. I'm hearing a little bit echoing, but I'm sure that will go away. We've got a great show for you here and uh, a couple great uh, guests and a lot of great conversation talking about some UFC 239 coming up this Saturday. So I am excited about that. But first, let me go ahead and bring in my co-host. What can I say about this man? He is uh, an exceptional 30-something-year-old guy in a sea of unexceptional 30-somethings. He is a mystery. He is uh, an enigma. Uh, you never know what he's going to say and do. That's because he doesn't know what he's going to say and do, even a couple seconds before he does it. Uh, we're talking about the man mostly known for uh, teaching Elon Musk everything he knows about business, Dr. Adam Lionfist Rora. Roar your way in here, Lionfist. <laughs> Roar. <laughs> Thank you for that uh, amazing introduction. I uh, haven't taught Elon Musk a single thing, but I guess he's been watching me for a while. That's so it. We'll he, he said he learned everything he knew from uh, from you, so I figured. Thank you. you know, I, I needed that smile. Yes, I knew that. See, that's it. This, this is the man uh, that, that something taught. Something in the background here. Exactly. Too. He taught. He taught Elon Musk everything he he knew about uh, about business, and he also gave a tip off to Elon Musk not to use that Musk cologne because he already had enough kind of Musk energy uh, coming at. Uh, people anyway so if you did the musk alone it was double you know what i mean anyway how, <laughs> how's everything going uh dr adam Rudy, you look great <sighs> everything's fabulous I well assume. i'm doing what i can to look at i got, i've been working hard at trying to get some stuff arranged uh, to help us out i've got uh, we're going to be going to vidcon i'll be representing uh, mma power hour and everything that i'm doing outside of this as well uh so i'll be representing us over there uh next week that's been a lot of prep work but just just excited to uh let everybody know what's going on with the show as we're doing it but also uh there at vidcon with all the other major content creators that are out there so yeah oh, you've got your music turn playing that in the off background there. but well i'll tell yeah. you that, Vid, that vidcon is exciting i've got to say i was tempted to go there but i ended up uh having to cancel because i i don't know what i'm talking about i mean it, it's it's eight hundred dollars a ticket so it is that was why i knew there was some reason why i didn't set that up but man oh man yeah. that vidcon is something what what's what uh, goes on at a, at a uh, well there's about twenty to thirty thousand people show up it's a big trade show for people to do kind of what i'm doing here with the production side of the show Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we, we all give each other pointers and, and uh, you know, there's all these companies that show up with their gear and uh, you've got all the new stuff, all the new toys to be able to make stuff happen with the video content creation. It's all centered around the video content creation. So people um, like myself who just love creating video content and putting it out there all over the place. <clears throat> and just all get together under one roof in, in Anaheim and uh, they have it overseas in a couple other places too but this, this is one of the big conventions for people that do what I do. I love it but it's not going to have a lot of people dressed uh, like Star Trek characters or anything like that is it? That's more no, like no, Comic Con no, no. is what that yeah, is. Yeah, that's, that's, Sci-Fi Con or whatever the that, hell that is. That's Comic Con. Now there are some people there that are content creators, some big internet content creators that do some crazy stuff and, and they're kind of known for that but I don't know if they'll be showing up in costume or not probably not. Well ladies and gentlemen if you are a content creator and you have eight hundred dollars burning a hole in your pocket a little more than that a little more than that then you can go to vidcon and you can meet this man who taught elon musk everything he knows about business and pick his brain it's only going to cost 475 dollars an hour but it's well worth it i say well worth it and he might even give you a discount and uh, charge you half that much if he likes you right adam you're actually pretty close to my consulting rates <laughs> <I like that. laughs> not That's cheap it. but That's yeah I, I i appreciate it uh real quick uh while we're getting into the show before we get into everything else i want to go ahead and give a huge shout out to combat press for always uh, supplying us with the awesome news feed that you see on our facebook twitter and uh, elsewhere uh make sure to go on over to combatpress.com where every fight has a story uh that's my number one go-to source for all combat sports related news uh especially now with the bare knuckle boxing that's coming out it's a great source to be able to keep up with it it's no fluff uh there are some opinion pieces but not really that many it's mostly just the facts uh they, they do a real good job of sticking to the facts over there and they're not uh um, gonna say too much that's gonna be 
disappointing, but uh, yeah, sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> I mean, okay. We're not always going to all agree on stuff. I, I exactly. say stuff and Colin's like, what the hell did you just say, Adam? <laughs> it's kind of like that. We all have moments like that where we have our opinions. We got to state it. And they have a couple of uh, uh, amazing writers over there that actually will have some really strong opinions about stuff. And it's kind of interesting to see the disagreements just within their own camp. But it's <laughs> it's dope. excellent news source. They don't stray away too often. Um, and, and Colin, I also want to give a huge shout out to you and your company, CrossTrainMMAFighter.com. Uh, because of Crosstrain MMA Fighter, we are able to have these awesome t-shirts. In fact, if anybody wants to get one, uh, make sure to hit us up with a message, a private message. We will uh, reach out to you and, and talk to you about how you can go ahead and get a hold of one or, or two or three or four. If you want 20 of them, you can buy them. Um, Absolutely. But, uh, you know, we are also looking to do a, a contest here coming up. If we get enough people in, I will be letting everybody know about that and we'll be uh, providing a t-shirt and uh, potentially a ticket or two uh, to uh, some fights. So we'll we'll keep everybody posted on, on how that's going to work and, and what we're going to do with that. Uh, also, uh, want to shout out my own company that I'm partnered with. I was so impressed by the work that they did for social media marketing for us here and then also for some other things with me uh, that I decided to go ahead and buy in to the company and I'm now a partner uh, over at DigiSouth. Uh, you can check us out at digisouth.co. If you need social media marketing anywhere, we can help you out. We do help out people with followers of all the ways up to a million, actually a little over that. Uh, we're dealing a lot with people too that have a smaller following so you can come on in at any point in time. And I really am trying to put an emphasis on this one because a lot of you fighters that are trying to get contracts uh, with the, the, the bigger organizations, you will need a social media following to get a little bit of pull when you come to the table and they're offering you deal it really helps out so we're, we're here to help and and i do have a huge focus in that area i i think that's something that i can help you guys out with if you're tuning in and and i know colin can vouch for me here and that's just uh it really is an important thing and we know what we're doing at digi south exactly digi south is the place to go uh and that's digi co you don't even have to put the m that's how good they are yeah that's i mean yeah. We, yeah. We're, we're so good that you just skip the m and and it, just it's golden CO. Digi, but digi <laughs> Exactly. Uh, uh, one more. Huh, what was I going to say? There was something like, oh, I, I just yes. wanted to go ahead and say anybody that wants to go ahead and uh, uh, be a, a partner with our show, contact us. We can talk about ways to do it. You don't necessarily need to come up with funds or uh, that sponsorship, that typical sponsorship that you're thinking of. Uh, there, there's ways for us to partner up and make things happen. We're always looking for new partners. We do have areas that need filled and we can maybe get creative together and, and get it filled with your help. So hit us up with a private message, either for a t-shirt, social media, or uh, sponsorships. Uh, sponsorships. Partnerships, yeah. We're, partnerships. We're, we're, yeah. We're, we're really working hard and, and right now at this point in time, uh, Colin and I are are just, man, we're, we're, we're beating each other up all the time because we're uh, we're at wit's end trying to keep this show going for everybody and, and it, it really it costs a lot of money to say yeah, the least so we, we're does. putting a lot of effort in there for you guys and we can definitely use a lot of partners and we, we appreciate any help that you can, could bring to the table absolutely any partnership anyone want to be involved in it or anyone wants to throw some money at us to help support us create, go, create a Patreon put our name on it and send us money don't do it no don't do that uh, oh, but, but, <laughs> what, what you can do we, we do actually have a PayPal you can go to our website and look f uh, at uh, the sponsors page yes and there is an area for you to go ahead it says donate but uh, for you to tip us say thank you uh, we, we appreciate it every dollar really helps absolutely uh, absolutely really does and uh, thank you for that Dr. Adam Nordoff thank you for your contribution I remember I saw some old comedy show and the person came off like with some critical funny stuff on the other guy and the other guy says thank you for that unsolicited contribution <laughs> <laughs> which means thank you for telling me some shit I didn't ask uh, to hear about you know but anyway no we appreciate it <laughs> hey, uh, it needed to happen <laughs> yes it is hey we found out that our guest will hit us up as uh, as we discussed i just got oh perfect positive, perfect positive. That, that's yep, the easier yep, way yes, yes. Uh, so so everybody does know what colin's talking about is uh skype can be funky sometimes <laughs> and our first guest is uh gonna be hitting us up so there won't be a skype dance well maybe a half second one i'll answer right away but right. uh <laughs> we, 
we, we just turned around and we weren't able to connect with him. So we told him just to call us. So he's going to be calling in. Yep, so. exactly. In the yeah. meantime, what can we say about UFC 239? Let's no. not, I, I actually knew you were going to do this. I prepared for this. So I'm sorry if this throws you off a little bit. No problem. Uh, let's, let's actually save that for you and, and Adam since you guys are doing a full breakdown. That's right. Uh, I, I went ahead and pulled up uh, the, the, the next one, which actually is an exciting one as well. The one, uh, the one after 239. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Because, uh, you know, just even looking at the, the prelims, we've got Sarah McMahon and, and Nico Montano. I'm yeah. really excited for that fight. Yes. Yeah, so am I. Uh, so am I. I, I don't know what your thoughts are. Uh, Nico hasn't really been around long enough for me to say she's going to come in and just tear Sarah. And she's coming up to a new weight class. Yeah, as well. exactly. She's yeah. coming into a new weight class, moving up. Uh, it's really hard for me to predict that one. Uh, I, I would definitely. Uh, put a, a lot on man. Sarah I think but yeah, yeah. I Nico is <laughs> yeah she's an it's, exciting it, fighter she is she, there's a lot of controversy controversy surrounding her she won the ultimate fighter reality show uh partly by not having to to fight our friend uh Cjara Eubanks uh but she did win and then she was scheduled to face uh Valentina Shevchenko to defend her title and Valentina said yeah I'll believe that when this girl shows up and sure enough I think it was uh uh, only a matter of a, a day or two before the fight, the Montano had to pull out, and and they stripped her. They stripped her of her title. It was interesting. I don't know what the deal was, but they actually, actually, I do. She had been injured for a full year when she committed to that fight and then didn't make that fight and i think basically ufc brass uh, said heck with this we're not we're not going to keep being yanked have our chain yanked by this girl who's essentially a newcomer um and so now all of a sudden another year has gone by almost <clears throat> and she's at a higher weight and and i guess she'll be more comfortable with that that could have been why she had to pull out of the fight it's a hard weight cut for her. sarah mcmahon is a tough first fight at uh at a new weight class <clears throat> one of the best uh female uh wrestlers or one of the best credentials for a female uh as far as wrestling in the history of the ufc um perhaps a little bit past her prime very strong tough girl very skilled um not that great a jits player off of her back as a lot of wrestlers aren't although some are learning but uh but um i think mcmahon stays on top of you you're you're in trouble but she can be out, out boxed and outstruck on her feet. And if she's put on her back, it's usually a problem. So it's going to be uh, on Nico Montano to see if that can happen. And uh, I think I'm going to go for Sarah McMahon, although both are very tough to uh, Yeah, I'm probably going with Sarah on this one, especially since uh, I don't actually, you know what? The more I think about this, this is, this is just that, that weight class that to me is a move up between 125 and 135. And when, when, you, when you move up that, that 10 pounds, you're actually coming in with an advantage because of the speed. Yep. There is such a huge difference. I am actually going to say Sarah might... <laughs> She's probably going to lose this one the more I think about it yeah, Nico, in, in that sense. I think. Okay, Nico. and that's one way to look at it. Sorry to interrupt you, but <clears throat> one way to look at it is, yeah, you're coming up from a weight class where people are lighter and, and faster, but then you're going up against a bigger, heavier body. Um, I think that that there is something to be said for coming up and bringing the speed. Uh, Nico also has a lot less miles on her and I think is probably at least six or seven years younger than Sarah. Um, I think, though, that my thought, you know, I think I've already thrown out it, Sarah, and I know you have Nico. I, I, I think that Sarah, when she's got girls her size and, and things get bad as far as her being put on her back or being outstruck is a problem. But I do think that with someone coming up from a lower weight class, I think that might be just a really good spot that Sarah needs because if she's got size on you, then her wrestling and, and her grittiness and her skill, I think, could uh, you know could be at least my thought the advantage. But anyway, oh, yeah. we, we, hey, yeah. you know what? I, I have to kind of go against you sometimes, so that yeah, way we we, sure. can, we can figure out uh, uh, who comes ahead. That's I, it. I exactly. surprisingly actually for the first week. Yep. Well, actually, I think this is the second time I've done it. I actually I, I predicted one match better than Colin. Nice. <laughs> one match better than you. It's it's, a, it's the only second time it's happened. I like out of it. All these weeks we've well, had this, good. but I like it. You can beat the wizard. <laughs> I can beat the wizard. I love it. So but I, we look at this as you're looking at in the graphic. Two of our good guests on our show right there. Look at that. 
we have two of our fighters on the card uh not july 6th but july 13th is that the 13th yes yeah and uh and we're talking about a number nine rank contender and the other man probably is maybe 11 or 12 now and so we're talking about josh emmett who we've had on twice uh ranked number nine and looks like uh and he's going up against Rashad bektik yeah very 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 tough fighter that should be an action fight both very very good balanced fighters both dynamic strikers and uh and uh, i think the wrestling goes a little bit in the favor of emmett um and then at 155 the gentleman that we just had a week ago uh Beniel Beniel Darius and I think that they don't have a number next to his name now although I know he has in the past and so if they're not putting a number next to his name he's got to be 11th or 12th or 13th somewhere close and he's going against Drakkar close absolutely and those are both very good fights very, very good, good fights yeah. I you know honestly I would say that the Josh Emmett and, and uh Be Mursad Bektik fight probably get fight of the night it really I mean, it really could be those guys are going to beat the crap yeah, out of each they're, other, yeah. They, they're both known for that yeah. so they, yeah. you know they're, they're coming in swinging heavy yeah. that's and, gonna be that's gonna be exciting yeah. yeah and in sacramento that's the card in sacramento and you know what there's a lot of team alpha male members on that card you notice the man there uh we call uh the california kid cali baby right uriah faber the man that brought the lighter weights onto the map i believe he's 40 years old now uh, which is a little bit of a, 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 a of a of an older fighter for 135 or 145 pounds. Actually, it's back at bantamweight. Um, but Uriah Faber is a beast. And, uh, I don't know how many UFCs they, they've had in Sacramento, uh, which is where he lives and trains, uh, and where Team Alpha Male is. But um, but basically, I think this is uh, he had to be on this card, even though he's been retired for two years. Right. And there's been a couple, I guess, uh, Dr. Adam Ward is indicating, but uh, I don't know if he was on any. Oh any, no 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 no! Oh. I'm just saying we have a couple minutes. Oh, to that's our, right. our okay. guest rings that's in right, here. That's right. Oh, and, but yeah, you're. Uriah Faber, got to go for him. Ricky Simone is a tough, tough guy. Uh, but I don't know enough him. about Ricky. Is he more of a striker or a grappler? More of a, I think more of a grappler, dynamic, kind of a stocky. That fighter. will be exciting watching that then, because I know while Uriah has been out, uh, he's been uh, coaching grappling quite a bit and also competing yeah. with the grappling. Yeah. Uh, I. It's it's going to be tough. Uh, yeah, that, that'll be exciting. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm going to jump right into the next one because we only have yes. a minute, real quick. Main event. The the, the main event of uh, Saturday, July 13th in Sacramento, we've got Jermaine Durandamy yep. and Aspen Ladd. Yes, very mm. interesting. Duranda, and this is uh, they have they have Duranda me here as number one contender at bantamweight. I I don't know about that. That's well. I I mean it makes sense. I guess well somewhat. Maybe, I don't know. And then they have Aspen Ladd at number four. Whatever. Anyway, I, I, Aspen Ladd is favored in this fight. Uh, she's definitely a superior grappler, uh, undefeated. Although she hasn't fought as many big names as uh, as Jermaine, but. Uh, but um, I gotta go, Aspen Lad. I, I I'm not a huge, huge Lad fan. Um, but she's been doing it. She's been, you know, she's been taking care of business. And uh, I accidentally, I, uh, you know what? I accidentally called her a tomato can a while back. She is not <laughs> yeah, that. No, no. I, I was thinking of somebody else, yeah, and it, it yeah. always sticks with me in all of her fights. Yeah. And now I watch them that much more intently. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, I, I I really agree with you. I think Aspen Ladd. I'm going to go with on this one. Yeah. Um, I'm a little more on the fence where I'm hopping back and forth. Yeah. If Durandami um, catches her, she can stop her. I mean, yeah. The, Aspen has never faced as dangerous a striker as Jermaine Durandami. <laughs> Last week I was saying yeah. me, I think, but I think so. Andrew. This week I'm 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 leaning more towards. Yeah, Lad. It, it really could look almost like a Felicia Spencer Megan Anderson fight where the grappler just gets closes the distance and stays on top or gets her down and, and finishes her, and that's probably what Lad is wanting to do. I'd like to see it get mixed up though. I'd like to see Lad's chin maybe uh, checked and see if it's really good because uh, Durandami can uh, can check your chin as a probably what an eight time uh, uh, Muay Thai champion I think they called the Iron Lady out of Holland and uh definitely very very tough fighters from the netherlands and, and holland um but uh i do think aspen aspen lands are okay so any minute our guest will be uh, calling us here any any minute our guest will be calling us and in the meantime i want to go ahead and say thank you everybody in advance for likes comments and shares uh we actually uh, facebook doesn't like how much we share our stuff we want everybody to see it the groups have requested that we share it uh yeah. that, that we kind of take things by our own uh reins and and 
share to all these different groups and then facebook turns around and says you've shared too many times you've violated the terms of service which is not accurate whatsoever no, no. uh no. this is one of those weeks we could definitely use your guys's help in getting the word out about our show uh if you're on fight tv excellent don't worry about it so much but if you're on facebook or even if you are and you want to get on over to the facebook page real quick give it a share hop back on over to, to fight tv where you normally watch us that'd be awesome uh we, we could definitely use all the shares and likes all right so we have mr our, our, David well, Feldman. Yep, we have Mr. Feldman calling in. All right. Hey, David, can you hear me? I can. How are you? Very good. Okay, we can see you. You're not going to be able to see us because of the multiple camera setup we have, but as long as you can see yourself in the square, then that is all we need, and then you'll be able to see the show afterward. It looks great, uh, and we see you there perfectly. Let me give you uh, a proper introduction here. We're on the air, ladies and gentlemen. So happy and excited to have this next guest on the show. Uh, he is the president of the Bare Knuckles Fighting Championship. This is the premier uh, organization in the world of Bare knuckles fighting many people say the only legit organization but nevertheless uh, they are what uh, what represents the legitimate world of bare knuckles fighting and uh, I want to say uh, thank you so much to mr. David Feldman for joining us welcome to the MMA power hour David uh, man it's great to be here thank you so much for having me sorry I'm adjusting the camera but man it's great to be here thank you so much for having me we're coming off a great event we're ecstatic we're getting great numbers in we're getting great results we're getting great feedback from the fans man it's really a fantastic day tomorrow to celebrate independence to celebrate america and to celebrate bare knuckle fighting championship absolutely my friend very well stated i remember reading about a week or so ago before the event that out of the big bellator event i think that was in england the big ufc event and bare knuckles that uh, more people were looking forward to the lobov malinaji and the rest of the card for bare knuckles fighting than i think the ufc and uh, bellator put together did that surprise you? I, absolutely. I mean, at, at this stage in our company's growth, I mean, we're, we're one year deep. And that it, it was so humbling for something like that to happen, you know, for that to come out. And the numbers actually matched it. So the numbers, the true numbers are matching basically what the polls had said. And it's, it's, it, it's unbelievable. I mean, we've been in business for one year. We put our heart, sweat, blood, tears, everything in our life into this thing. And to see that the fans really do enjoy this and they want to see it, they're asking for yeah. it. It's, it's amazing. Absolutely, and the, it looks great. Uh, I, I I ordered the pay-per-view and watched it, and I, I'd seen it a couple times before, but I think I had missed a couple of them. So I'd seen the first and the second one, which looked great, but this sixth event looked really, really good. I love the ring. Uh, I love your, uh, your TV uh, commentary staff, uh, which is uh, Sean Wheelock, many, many years, one of the great uh, commentators for Bellator Fighting. You have the yep. champ, uh, Anthony Tarver, one of the best light heavyweights in history and you have my friend uh one of the most exciting ufc fighters in many years chris lights out Lytle. that's that's an a team right there you got to feel good having all those people at the mic absolutely i mean when we did this talking to our team we said we have to really sprint out of the starting block we can't crawl we can't walk we have to run we have to run really fast and to do that we have to get the right people involved and i think they're all really gelling really well we're going to add some more people. We're going to add some celebrity uh, status into this as well. You know, we have to do different things as we grow. But I'm so, so happy about the stage we're at right now. Um, it's really, truly amazing, you know, to to get some of the reports in for some of the numbers that we did and, you know, truly, really pinching ourselves because it's, it's, it's like it's truly unbelievable that in a year, we're not the UFC. Look, we're not even close to the UFC. We're not Bellator. We're not even close to Bellator. I want to take my hat off to both of those organizations. They've done some amazing things. Dana White's unbelievable and everything he's ever done. Really, truly great. But to even be mentioned in the same sentence, to beat them in a poll, and I know it's a poll, it's no big deal, but in one year of growth, I mean, we're so, so humbled. I, I, I can't even be, begin to tell you how humbled we truly are. Absolutely. It's, the, the the fans that are pouring out and they want to see more of it i mean it is pure it's true fighting it's it's as pure as it really gets yeah and i think the fans really like it the thing is it's just action all night long so 
we designed the ring, we designed the rule set for action, and the fans get action, and I think they really love it. Absolutely, and I was also happy to see one of my friends, the legendary cut man, Stitch Duran, actually is working on some of your fights, isn't he? Yeah, Stitch is great. We also got uh, Paul Kewen on this one, too, a, uh, a Bellator cut man. We have, I mean, if you want to be the best, you have to surround yourself with the best, and I think... Right now, we're surrounding ourselves with the best, and we're trying to do the best thing we can do. We have a, a great production team. Brian Rico is, is heading that. Chuck McKean is the, is the director. He's directed so many stellar combat sporting events in the past. I mean, we've got a great team with us. And I always mention, I always thank when I do my Facebook posts, I thank my team. Because, look, although it was my vision at the beginning, without the team, this never happens. Right. And, I've got a great team surrounding me, and I've got more and more people that want to join this team and and really see the direction we're going and the likes direction we're going. So it, it's awesome to be surrounded by great people and hopefully more and more great things to come. Absolutely. I really think there will be. So let's jump into it. I want to I wanna use this opportunity to, to get people more familiar with what we're looking at. I'm a, I'm a big lifelong combat sports fan. I've been focusing more on, uh, on uh, MMA for the last 20 some years. I was supporting it ever since the first UFC in 93. Before that, I was a big boxing fan was I, when I was young and kickboxing. And uh, at one point I was so much into boxing, I was kind of almost a close to a boxing historian. And I remember and know the fact that bare knuckles boxing was the first boxing. A lot of you that don't know uh, and that are only used to boxing with gloves, the gloved era started in 1892 uh, with John L. Sullivan winning the title, becoming the first uh, the first uh, man to hold a heavyweight championship in the gloved era, the Marcus of Queensbury rules. He had also been a champion in bare, not bare knuckles boxing. But before that, I think there was probably 50 or 70 years of bare knuckles boxing, wasn't there? There was. There, there's. I mean, it, it all evolved from bare knuckle boxing. The uh, professional glove boxing did as well as MMA. I mean, MMA started started with bare knuckles and it, and it moved into gloves. And it all moved into gloves for the safety of the hands. Right. But what's so ironic about what we're doing here is we've had, I think, 140 matches so far. And we've had five broken hands. That's not much. And I think, you, I think you had the same amount, or if not more, in, in MMA or boxing because you're throwing a little more reckless, recklessly. You're not calculating your punches as much. Right. So we're so happy like I said, and I'm sorry to keep saying happy, happy, right. but I'm super happy right now, man. This is awesome. Yes. The injury reports are coming in. The guys aren't getting seriously injured. They're not getting the head trauma. They're not getting re really the broken bones. They are getting cuts. But you know what? Fans want to see some blood. Yep. They're getting small little knuckle cuts, two, yep. three-inch cuts yep. that, that we're stitching up with three, four, you know, four stitches, and that's it. And we have two great um, – plastic surgeons on staff that stitch these guys up right after the fight so everything is running really smooth now you know we're again we got some big plans we're starting a monthly series in september it'll go into august um we'll do a monthly series plus we'll do an additional four pay-per-view events so we're, we're targeting between 14 and 16 shows from September of 2019 to August of 2020. That's fantastic. Now, let me know more about what this monthly series is because the pay-per-view will be the events, but what's this series about? So it's finding the next generation. It's, it's called the Knuckle Up Series is what we're doing. We're trying to find the guys that want to be the next star, the guys that really have it. We're going to put on tremendously competitive fights with guys of um, you know equal talent and equal ability, and we're going to see if they can bang it out and see if they have what it takes to be the next star. Because, look, what we're doing now, what we're doing with this company, it's not easy. We're not just starting a new company. We're not, like, starting a new MMA company or a new boxing company. We're actually starting a new sport. Yeah. So with starting a new sport, we have to teach people about the sport. We have to build our own stars. We have to brand everything. But we also have to bring in some talent from other sports as boxing and MMA to give us the notoriety that we need right now as we're developing the, the uh, original talent that we have. So as we're doing that, and that's what this Knuckle Up series is all about, to develop the next star in bare knuckle fighting. Right. We're gonna be around for a while, we're doing some great things, and at the end of this year, I'd love to be able to pull 12, 12 stars that can really carry a pay-per-view event that nobody's really ever heard of until bare knuckle fighting. That would be fantastic. Where can someone uh, who's uh, possibly wanting to jump into that uh, action uh, contact you and find out how to possibly be one of them? 
Now, they can go to our website at bareknuckle.tv, scroll all the way to the bottom. There's a fighter registration button. You just click on that. Uh, we analyze that. We'll give you a call. We're also doing some open tryouts around the world. And, again, you, you click into our website at bareknuckle.tv, and you find out everything that's going on about how we're trying to find fighters and all the fights that are coming up. Excellent. Now, one thing I know and that some fans will know and some won't know is that when you start a new sport, you have to get approval by different athletic commissions around the world, around the country. Uh, the UFC struggled for many, many years with that. And, uh, and and I know you guys are making good progress, but you know, I know there's people all around the country that are saying, man, I wanna see, uh, I wanna be able to go over to Vegas to see uh, the BKFC, or I wanna be able to go over to Los Angeles, or I wanna be able to go over to New York. Do you, do you have an idea as far as how long you're expecting it's gonna take to keep on winning commissions over I know you've won several over and you're I think going quicker than the UFC did by far in the early days but what's your thought do you think that's going to take many many years to be sanctioned in all 50 states or at least 40 or or what, what do I you, do what do you think? Yeah. I mean I do but I think the thing is is we need to grow at that pace though we don't need to have 50 states saying yeah come here right now and we can only do 12 shows for the year right that makes so sense. that that doesn't really matter for us right now so we need to open up the states as we can do the shows so we do we don't want to be the only one doing this i said this earlier today we don't want it to be the only one doing bare knuckle fighting we want competition because competition is going to give fans more ability to watch bare knuckle fighting and to get educated on it and to become a fan of bare knuckle fighting in general. Right. And then they can come over to us what hopefully we're the top dog in this and then people can, you know, check out the quality of the events that we do. Yeah. But we don't I think we're probably three or four years out from getting some of the really, really big states. The thing is is when I pitched this initially, I pitched it on perception. So I said, look, this is what I think it's gonna be. This is I, I don't I think it's safer I don't think you're going to get this injury. I think this is going to happen all through all the research I did in the past, but I did on what I thought. Now I'm presenting on actual fact. I'm presenting on the injury reports. I'm presenting on what actually happens now. So it's making it so much easier to open that door right now. Makes sense. And when it comes to how it's marketed, I remember in the early UFC days when it was no holds barred fighting, that they they would put a disclaimer on the screen i don't know if you remember that or uh you know yeah and they would say this is not an exhibition this is real brutal combat and for those of you that don't have a strong stomach don't watch it and and one of the things that i think they 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 look back on thinking maybe that wasn't the smartest was to kind of promote it that way but it did get a certain chunk of the of the population to say wow what the hell is this i gotta see this this is no holds barred fighting with headbutting and all this other stuff so let me ask you are you trying to preserve some of the excitement by embracing that, hey, this is bare knuckles, brutal combat, there's no gloves, or are you trying to say, listen, this is actually a safer sport, it's your hands get smashed up a little bit more, but gloves were only invented to help protect the hands. This is not brutal. This is not this is some, not something that needs a disclaimer far and beyond UFC or, or boxing. What's your thought? Are you trying to embrace both, or are you trying to really go more one way than the other, if I may ask? I think it's a middle ground on, on both of them. We want to let people know that, that this is the purest, most raw form of combat that there really is, and you are going to get cuts, and you're, you're going to get some broken hands, and and you're going to get the superficial damage, but you're not going to get the head trauma. You're not going to get the lasting injuries that happen when you get hit over and over and over again with an MMA or a boxing glove on. Right. But at the same time, we want people to know that we're taking all the precautions, we're taking all the medical um, precautions, we're doing everything that we're supposed to do to make this safe as sport as possible, at the same time being so exciting, fast-paced, and action-packed the entire real really the entire event long absolutely how does the rule set compare with bare knuckles boxing now i know in bare knuckles boxing in the 1800s you if you knock someone down you could stand right above them and i know that we're not implementing anything like that nor were we trying to say we're creating an identical rule set as 1850 but what are what are we looking at for people that don't know and that are confused and that are trying to understand more uh how how it works what's what's the rule set of bare knuckles boxing uh, in the bkfc as it stands right now 
I say that it's a true middle ground. I mean, punches are the only strikes that are allowed. So it's basically what I say to a lot of people. It's bare knuckle boxing with a tiny twist where you can do a Muay Thai necktie and you can pull the neck down into punches. And you and, and if you're clinched inside, you can punch with your open hand. If there's a low on action, we're going to break it. Yeah. So I think it's kind of like a true middle ground where an MMA fighter can do really well in this. As we saw on the last show, we actually had three matches that were MMA versus boxers, and all three MMA fighters won, Did which that... is astounding to me because yeah. this is this is boxing. I mean, it's bare knuckle boxing, but I think the bare knuckle and a little bit of clinch changes the whole entire game, and I think it makes it fun for anyone in any combat sport to get involved, for a Muay Thai fighter, for a kickboxer, an MMA fighter, a boxer. I think it's a true middle ground for all of them, and I think they can all excel well in this sport. Without a doubt, without a doubt. And also, I want to let everyone know who's watching. The BKFC has never had any controversy around them. I'm sure David knows there's an organization that has had controversy in not paying their fighters, and a few high-profile people were involved in that. That is not the Bare Knuckles Fighting Championship. There's never been issues one with any fighters saying they weren't paid and well taken care of by David Feldman's organization. So I want to let you guys know we're not having someone on that's going to be uh, screwing people out of their money or that has any history doing that. Uh, I know you want competition, but I'm sure you don't want competition like that, do you? No, absolutely not. Look, I, I want competition. And when I, I think uh, Data 5000 did a show actually the night before, we did a show mm -hmm. on April 5th, and I said, look, I wish them the best. They're going to do a professional show. I knew they had money behind them. I knew they were. The, I knew their production team. I knew they were going to do the right show. I don't love the fighting surface they had, but that's not my business. But I think that they put on a great quality show, and and if other people can put on good quality shows, and then people are all of a sudden talking like bare knuckle fighting is the place to watch, yep. and then they go, all right, look, there's a million MMA organizations out there, right? But there's one UFC, right? Maybe we can be the UFC of bare knuckle fighting, and that would be great for us. Absolutely. Or we could be the Bellator of bare knuckle fighting, and that would be great for us as well. Absolutely. But I just wanna, I wanna kind of set the precedent in all these different states that are opening up for the fans and the commission to really kind of know what to expect, because I think we do a very professional show. We do everything safety oriented. We pay the guys well, so I think we're a good we're a good organization to set the precedent there. So we can open up these states, and I know it's not going to happen in every state probably, but if we open up these states and do a show and then we kind of set the barometer for what bare knuckle fighting is supposed to be and then other competition comes in, we're happy. Yeah. because then other people are watching this sport and they're becoming a fan of this sport. Absolutely, without a doubt, and I definitely know I am, and so many people are. Now, you have crowned uh, a couple of champions so far, or at least one, have you not? Uh, two, yes. We actually crowned Arnold Adams heavyweight champion, which will be fighting. Um, he doesn't know the opponent yet, but he's going to be fighting a UK BKB champion. He's oh. going to be fighting a bare knuckle boxing champion from the UK. So it's going to really be a true world championship test. And we also have Johnny Brutal Bedford, who put on a stellar performance in our last show, and he's our uh, lightweight champion. So he'll be back probably in September or October at the latest. And, you know, we expect great things from these guys. The, the thing that I pride ourselves on is we are, we're putting some bigger names in there and they're getting a chance at the spotlight and they're making great money, but we're not giving them a championship shot. We're not giving them a title shot. We are building our own champions. It yeah. doesn't really matter who you are. We're building our champions. And then, you know, a lot of the guys that are fighting for us are saying, can I fight for the championship? I said, no, not till we do the tournament. This is what the fans, I think this is really truly what the fans deserve yeah. to really build champions. Yeah. And, and also I have great matches that are aside from the championship that are going to carry the promotion right now. So I think we're doing it all. And I think it's a pretty good balancing act at this time. And I think that, like I said, the fans are telling us by the numbers that we're doing that they're liking what we're doing. Without a doubt, without a doubt, that's universally the case. Now, I like the fact, because I was actually going to mention BKB, but you did it for me. They're kind of the only other legit organization, it seems like, and, I, and the Dada 5000 organization, I'm not sure, but I know he's been conducting fights for years, so it's good to, to hear that he, sure. he did something good, right? But the BKB is, uh, is almost like the BKFC of England, where they're doing right. legitimate shows, and I, I really like the fact that you guys are doing, it's kind of almost, how's that going to work? Because it's like a unification Fight. You're having your champion, uh, Adams, what's his first name? Arnold Adams. Arnold Adams going against the BKB champion. which A former BKB champion, ah. so he's not with the organization anymore. But okay. here's the thing is, look, 
the one thing I'll say about BKB is they do one heck of a job. They do a great production. They have great fighters. They, you know, everything I've ever heard about them is they do really great stuff. So if they can continue doing great stuff and we continue doing great stuff and there becomes a time where there can be a unification match, that would be great. Yeah. And if not, that's okay too, right. because, you know, I think everything kind of has to happen in America you know, a lot of things happened in England, MMA originated in Brazil, but it wasn't until it hit America where it became big time. So I think that hopefully they thank us as well, because we're giving them recognition as well, we're giving the sport recognition. And look, there's room for more than one promotion here. There's true, yes. but I think we're, we're, we are setting the precedent that we are the top in the world right now at bare knuckle fighting, and we hope to continue that streak. Absolutely, I like that attitude and that philosophy. Uh are you uh, are you still working with Rowdy Beck or is that uh, gone past uh, past now? Uh, we're, you know, uh, she chose to go over to Bellator and get back into MMA and probably got a pretty good payday there. And we wish her the best. And if you know if things work out and she wins a couple of fights and comes back and fights again for Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship, she's welcome with open arms. You know, it it kind of really depends on how she performs in in Bellator. Yeah. To be honest with you, because if she happens to go up go over there and get beat two or three times it doesn't do much for us right i don't think she will she's tough yeah. she's kind she's nice she's marketable i love everything about her and i wish her the best and if things work out she'll come back to our organization absolutely absolutely and i like i, lo I like the fact that you have women in uh, the bare knuckle boxing a lot of people don't know that the bear the sport of bare knuckle boxing was around for maybe a hundred years but female bare knuckle boxing i think may legitimately be a BKFC creation. I think you may be the first organization to actually create the sport of female bare knuckle boxing. Are you actively trying to find a, uh, as many female fighters now as male or uh, however much you'd care to admit, are you are you kind of maybe trying to focus more on the men now or what's your thought? No, I'm definitely going to get more men because I think there's more men fighters out there. But... Yeah. Yeah. We're going to announce probably eight to ten women signings on Monday here. On nice. Monday, whatever the date, maybe I think it's the ninth, whatever that date is on July. We're going to announce eight to ten women signings. We're definitely doing the um, getting into the women bare knuckle fighting business. Absolutely, because so far some of our best fights have been women fights. So mm -hmm. we're absolutely going after women, but we're definitely going after more men because we have to go after more men. Yeah. Um. Because there's more men that fight. Yeah, absolutely. And the MMA fighters, you were surprised how they beat the boxers. Are you are you surprised at the toughness a lot of these MMA fighters have? Because I think that's also what's helping uh, to to get them through these fights. It seems like we lost video on you, uh, David. When you have a chance, if you could hit that video button, it's uh, it should be. To get it right now, yeah. Appreciate it. it. Should be the one that looks like a camera with a line going across it. Perfect. You got me now. Perfect. Gotcha. Appreciate it. So what do you think of that? I have a feeling just the MMA fighters training is so good. And a lot of these uh, these wrestlers are so tough and rugged individuals that it just seems like they come in there just with a lot of uh, strength and ability to absorb pain that uh, surprises a lot of the boxers. No, I, absolutely. I mean, they're they're all tough guys. Look, the MMA fighters, I think, are a little more used to this. Although they, though they've never really been hit with the bare knuckle, they're getting hit with an elbow. They're getting hit with the shin and knee. So I think they're more used to getting hit with the bone yeah. type of, you know, type of punch rather than the glove. Yes. So I think they're very used to this, and they're tough. Look, anyone that competes in MMA at a high level is one tough dude or yeah. woman. I mean, yeah. they're tough. Yeah. yeah. They're tough yeah. as hell, and. We're giving them the middle ground here, and I think that's what really showed in this last event that a boxer or an MMA fighter or a Muay Thai fighter can all win at this sport. That's what it is. It's truly an open ground for all different combat sports, and we welcome all different combat sports to be a part of Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. Absolutely. I like that. And it's each fight is five, is it five three-minute rounds? So here's what we did. It's it's, it's five two minute rounds because every like, like I said, everything was designed for fast paced action. Right. But what we are going to do, we're going to do two things now. We're going to change the rules in two things. If we get a draw, we're going to do an extra round, which I think is awesome for the fans. Mm -hmm. Championship oh, fights or main event fights will all be seven two minute rounds now. Excellent. So that's the only two little tweaks we're doing. And, and look. 
like I said to everybody when we started this, we don't know everything. We just know that we're designing a fun, fast-paced environment here that I think the fans are going to like, but we're learning as we're going, and we're listening to the fans, and the fans said, we hate draws, so we're going to solve that by doing an extra round. And they said, the championship fights, so people can't get on their bicycle for five rounds, need to be a couple extra rounds, so we're making them seven. We're listening to the fans, and I hope the fans appreciate that because we truly want to give the fans what they want because without the fans, we don't have a sport. Absolutely, I like that, and that's something that uh, I'm glad that you know uh, as a uh, as a, a, a president and promoter, uh, you know that you are. What uh, what can you tell us about uh, the uh, next event, BKFC Seven? I know six just happened a week or so ago, so I'll understand if there's nothing planned. But is there any information about a location or anyone fighting on this next great event? Yeah, August 10th, Biloxi, Mississippi. Jason Knight is coming back. He's going to fight. One of the toughest dudes, um, really, that ever stepped into the cage, Leonard Garcia, that has a war written all over it. We're going to do a heavyweight championship match. Arnold Adams is going to most likely defend his title against uh, British champion Mark Goodbeer. We have a four-woman tournament, four 125-pound women's that are going to fight and declare our 125-pound women's champion. We have a lot of great fights in the undercard. I'm going to announce everything next week, and I think the fans are going to be really, really excited. But I'm not going to announce the platform we're on yet, but I am going to say that Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship 7, because we did so well at Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship 6, this is going to be a free event for all the fans. We're doing it free. Oh, wow. It'll be on an app for all the fans because we want to extend this fan base, and we think what better way than to give it to the fans for free for this one. Give them a great show that they've been loyal to us. The only way we could ever show this before was on pay-per-view. Yep. And now we have some other options. So let's give it to them free, and I hopefully the fans enjoy it. I like that a lot. And ladies and gentlemen, you're talking about a an event that has been twenty nine ninety five pay per view that will be free. So you don't want to miss that because they can't do that forever. And uh, and it's nice that they're doing it at all. I don't remember UFC ever doing that. Uh, so this is something that I think uh, shows that they want to be uh, inclusive as far as the fan base for BKFC, and that's fantastic. And that is uh, yeah, that, the date on that is August thirteenth. You said. That's August 10th, okay. Saturday, August 10th in Biloxi, Mississippi at the Mississippi Coast Coliseum. Excellent. Tickets are available now at TV. They're selling re actually really, really well. And again, I'll announce that app as soon as we sign the deal. I'll announce that app on Tuesday, but it's going to be free for everybody in the United States. Fantastic. That's excellent. I really appreciate that. Anytime you have any information you want to announce uh, to us, of course, we're always happy to have a scoop. I'm sure you have other people as well, but let us know because we're we're getting to be a bigger and bigger source as far as getting news out for not only uh, MMA, but uh, kickboxing, uh, jujitsu, and happy to embrace uh, bare knuckles boxing as well. Uh, my my uh, great uncle many years ago was a boxing uh, top 10 contender, and uh, so I have boxing. Who's that? Yeah, yeah. Was, well, Mike Sherman was his name. Oh, nice. nice. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, so this is going back many, many years, and so I'm uh, a big, big fan of, uh, of boxing, great, and I really great. like bare knuckles. So basically, uh, one of the things people need to know is that you can't throw hands as much uh, because of not having the gloves there. So people are not being hit in the head as much. So this is something that's really important when David was saying there are the, they don't have the concussions and the head trauma. It's because with traditional boxing, you can be hit in the head 500 times maybe even a thousand times sometimes in a, in a in a fight and there's a lot less punches because you can't break your hand now david has said that there have only been a half a dozen cases of broken hands and that's because the fighters are aware of this and they know that you have to pick your shots more so it makes it more interesting and exciting i think from a fan's perspective and you don't see so many missed punches or sometimes even punches thrown that 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 are just trying to gauge the distance like that where you're where you're seeing how close you are to someone because you know you don't want to throw someone just randomly a punch and hit someone on the top of the head and break your hand easier so it's a it's more of a, a, a strategic matchup in a chess game i think you also have some people that are that are working with uh with the fighters i know you don't have anything yet like a performance institute but i think you have some experts that are really giving some of these guys coming from both mma and traditional boxing um some some tips on kind of the difference in this sport and to kind of get acclimated aren't you absolutely we have a lot of guys that have done this in the past that are trying to help these guys you know grow in this sport and and, and help our sport grow the thing is is 
there's always misconceptions. You would think that bare knuckle fighting, you're going to break the hands. But here's here's what really happens in a, in an MMA or a boxing glove. You're not always clenching your fist very, very tight because you have the glove on there and it's protecting it. So you're throwing sometimes with not a completely clenched fist. In bare knuckle fighting, they're clenching their fist tight in fear of breaking their hand, and because of that, they don't break their hand as much. Nice. So that's you know one thing that these guys are are are, are, be, are being taught. Um, really close your hands, you know, tight. Um, they call boxing the sweet science. You know, I call boxing. Bare knuckle boxing, the sweetest science, because you have to pick your shots. You have to be very selective on everything that you're really doing in this sport. And it's showing, it's growing, it's exciting. So I don't think that any of that is taken away from the excitement. I think it's actually adding to the excitement because the suspense built up. Yeah, makes sense. Also, you mentioned a woman's four uh, four person tournament. There's never going to be more than one fight in a night. I don't think you could do that in bare knuckles boxing for a fighter. So it's not it's not a tournament where you'll see someone fight twice in the same night. Or or, or would you maybe see that? No, no, it'll be it'll be a two night tournament. I mean, we'll do this, and then on either the September or the October show, we'll crown the champion, depending if anyone gets cut or injured or anything like that. Okay. We'll move on to that and crown the champion on one of the following shows. But no, no fighter in bare knuckle will ever fight more than one fight in one night. That makes sense. I think for safety reasons and cuts and everything, that makes sense. And also, right. athletic commission might not go for that. And so you're you're planning on having an event every single month for the rest of the year, pretty much. Is that right? Yeah, we, we might not do December just because we see some big um, fights coming up in December and we can't get too close to Christmas. But other than that, we're doing every every month and then starting January every month into, uh, into 2020. I think the fans are going to love this because they're going to watch a lot of the events free and they're going to be really happy about this. And then we're going to build up some of the bigger events that we'll do on a pay-per-view basis on a very, very reasonable price. Nice. Are you happy to go against Bellator and UFC on a Saturday, or would you prefer if every Saturday you could get uh, on a day where neither of those are happening? No, I, I really don't want to go with um, – I'm sorry, I think I lost you again. Yeah, no problem. There I, don't, I don't want to go against Bellator or UFC, but it's inevitable. I mean, uh, UFC is doing 42 shows, Bellator is doing – whatever, 20 shows a year, whatever they're doing. So we're going to end up having to go against them. And look, I think I don't think anyone wants to go against anyone because they want all the fan base to themselves. But right. we're going to put on a great product and hopefully that we can keep our fan base growing each and every event. Makes sense. Are there any thoughts of, uh, of gyms where people are especially and specifically training for bare knuckles fighting? I would guess people can certainly start them on their own, but is there any, anything you've heard of anyone doing that or any thought of BKFC helping to uh, enable something like that to exist? Yeah, I mean, there are some gyms that are MMA gyms or boxing gyms that are actually doing bare knuckle fighting classes now. There are some in Florida, some in Chicago. There's actually in, in Australia, uh, due to Beck, her trainer is now doing a bare knuckle fighting uh, lessons and, and courses over there. So they're definitely going to be opening up. I don't think we're going to open. And uh, how about bonuses? Are you looking to implement that bonus system, fight of the night at any point, or knockout of the night or anything? Or is that something that you, that you really feel like you don't want to be part of the BKFC? No, we did that for this show. We actually, uh, Jim Allers got the uh, knockout of the night, and Tom Schofer, Shoot Julian Lane, got the fight of the night. They all got bonused. We're not disclosing their bonuses yet. Um, we're going to wait a couple more fights before we disclose everything that we're doing. But uh, they all got bonus. They're all very happy. We also, in a lot of the contracts, we offer knockout bonuses. We don't do win bonuses because it's so fast-paced that we don't want these guys coasting to a 10-minute victory. We want them... You know, if they stop the guy due to too much punishment or too many cuts or they knock the guy out, they get a bonus that way. But, you know, like I said, everything is for action. We want to make sure we don't get these dull fights. And, look, we're going to get a dull fight here or there. But we want to get as, mo as much or as most um, – exciting fights as we can possibly get with this organization absolutely and speaking of which uh jason knight and leonard garcia is next on tap august 10th is that right yes it is yeah well, i mean that's it fireworks yeah that's going to be for sure and i know you're using boxing weight classifications which makes sense since it is a boxing event so in other words for mma fans that don't know it differs a little bit from mma but being a guy that's been following both for many years i would believe the the lightest weight in uh in boxing that you guys probably have would be uh what one uh like 126 which would be uh, well actually actually we do 
it's funny because we do MMA weight classes uh-huh. with boxing names. So 126 uh-huh. for us, 125 for us would actually be the featherweight division. Right. 135 is the lightweight division. 145, I don't have it in front of me. I think it's a junior I see. welterweight. I 155, see. which this one is, is going to be the junior middleweight division. Right, right. Junior middleweight and then uh, 160 middleweight. Uh, yes. No, no, no. If you're doing, I see what you're saying. So then you would be using then 170, calling that like light heavyweight. And then actually that's do what 175. It... 175 is light heavyweight. There we go. So okay. we go like this we go 155, 165, 175, 185. And then 205, and then heavyweight. I like, and then heavyweight though. Does that have to have a cap of 266 pounds, or is that unlimited? Right now, in some states, it has a cap. In some states, it doesn't. We're trying to get everybody under the 265 pound mark. Um, and then, if we get some some great guys that we think are great over the 266 pound mark, we'll match them and and we'll create something with them. But I think we want to try to keep it under a 265 pound mark. Yeah, and I understand that, and I think, like, I've talked to several heavyweights that say no one wants to see a bunch of fat guys uh, in there, you know, out of shape. Uh, but, you know, I guess if you had guys like a boxer like uh, Nikolai Valoev, I think, who was, like, 7 feet tall and yeah. 340 pounds, there's no way they'll ever make 260-something. So, but, you know, I guess you don't come all, come uh, across them too often. But love that you have a lot of great celebrity names in there. Johnny Bedford was awesome. That was an amazing fight uh, that he had, and the fights are so exciting the commentary is great chris lytle knows his stuff and 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 i love that you have an mma fighter in there with uh, a boxer and antonio tarver looks like they get along great and uh it's just a great team and uh, i really think uh that this sport is going to keep on rocking man i wanted to let you know that we're behind you 100 percent, and uh, we're happy to do whatever we can to help bring promotion to you guys uh as the premier bare knuckles boxing uh, organization called bare knuckles fighting championship uh, my producer dr adam rorda will hit you up after this and let uh, let you know that uh, whenever you want us to release something uh, uh, or or if you want to throw some of your fighters uh, to do interviews at this or that time, we'll be happy to do it. That's so awesome, man. Thank you for support. Great show that you guys have. And again, thank you for supporting us and the sport and everything that we're doing. It's guys like you that are going to help make this go to the next level. And thank you again from the bottom of our hearts at Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. But most importantly, thank you to the fans for tuning in and watching us and seeing this thing grow and being a fan of our organization. Thank you. You're very welcome. David Feldman, President, Bare Knuckles Fighting Championship. Keep up the great work, my friend. We'll be in touch. Take care. Bye-bye. You too. Bye-bye. And that was David Feldman, the president of BKFC. This is the organization that has been having the pay-per-view events where everyone gets paid, where things go well, where there's a lot of fun and a lot of action. Nothing to do with any organization with this BS that uh, that are not paying the fighters that have any controversy. So in the United States, one organization here, Bare Knuckles Fighting Championship, is what we're seeing being legit and dominating the action over in England. It's BKB, Bare Knuckles Boxing. Uh, but really look forward to, uh, to seeing some more amazing fights and david is a really humble nice guy isn't he Adam? oh absolutely i'm i'm excited to have a nice fun conversation with him here after this in the next couple days hopefully well yeah. it's fourth of july i'll wait till next week but yeah I'm, I'm super excited just for everything that he's got going on and the way he's handling uh, just all the good news about the numbers coming in uh it, it basically just whopping walking all over uh uh, UFC numbers, pay per view, pay per view views, and and uh, wow, it's just it's so exciting. Yeah. To, I can only imagine for him it oh, being yeah. so exciting. Oh yeah, and just the way he's handling it, it's great. You know, he's not uh, putting down Dana at all, and just. Nope. Uh, going with the punches in a very humble way and I, i'm very appreciative of, uh, of that you don't see that too much with promoters and no between promotions there's usually a lot of beefs and uh you heard, you guys heard it here first that uh, uh bkfc is uh open to the idea in the future of bkb and and them doing some sort of unification fight that is awesome i love yeah. hearing that that's that's, that's yeah. some huge news to get uh so those of you that were tuned in you, you guys just got the the cutting edge news <laughs> absolutely they're they're uh, uh you know and the fact that they want competition one thing that is a true statement and we love our ufc fighters we love our ufc we're a we're a press credential organization but one of the things that i think the ufc over the last 20 years has done with closing down strike force and closing down uh, uh uh pride is to say hey we'd rather be 
your only source of MMA. And I think what David is saying, I, I, I honestly, I like even a little bit better, is saying we don't need to be your only source of bare knuckles boxing. We welcome competition coming out there. We want to be your premier source and most respected. We want to be the UFC of the bare knuckles world, but we're not adverse to having reputable organizations that pay their fighters and take care of their fighters um, out there. And I like to hear that. Very, very humble, nice guy. I uh, really like David Feldman, and I think he's got the Absolutely. right... Absolutely. Well, I think, I, I think he has the same type of concept, uh, other than the fact that it's not a non, non-profit organization, the same concept as how the NFL did it when there was NFL and AFL. Yep. I, it's kind of this similar mentality. Uh, probably a little more so than I would say similar to boxing just just the way he was kind of explaining it you know hey kind of open to it you know we we have no problem working alongside them and you know there's potential for a unified uh, fight so uh, you know there, there there's some interesting aspects there it, that? It, a lot of discussion could be had on that for days uh, when are we catching up with our next guest here Colin do we have a few minutes yes we do we okay do, we perfect do. Uh, I just want to go ahead and say thank you guys for tuning in as always uh, anybody that's looking f- uh, to fill this space right here that I am saying we could use a sponsor or two uh, feel free to contact us if you're looking to sponsor a great show with a, with a large following uh, we are actually I think between Colin and I and all of our social platforms, we've probably got about forty to 50,000 followers. Uh, yeah. You know, we, decent numbers. So, you know, we'd love to have your logo on the screen. We'd love to have you on the ticker up top, which actually that is really affordable. Just letting you know if you want to get up there, contact us with the message. Also, everybody that's tuning in right now, thank you so much. Give it in advance for the likes, comments, and shares. And if you've done it already, thank you even more. Uh, and and thank you again for everything coming up here with the likes, comments, and shares because we definitely need those shares coming out today because we are restricted by the Facebook land. And I don't even know if Facebook's working all that well. So uh, get on over, share our link to the, the Fight TV uh, show and page and we'll be right over there uh, also want to say I, I didn't give them a shout out earlier but uh, Warfighter Hemp if you are looking for some CBD of the highest quality and you want some CBD products have no has no THC in it uh, tested against all the impurities out there and one of the purest CBD products on the market go to Warfighter Hemp Dot com. You can get purchase product over there, get a 50% discount uh, utilizing in checkout the promo code MMA CBD. It goes across the top of our screen every now and then. Uh, also, 50% of their profits, even after that, goes to uh, uh, veterans and different causes with veterans. Uh, so, being that it's, it's the 4th of July tomorrow, a very important day, I, I figured we need to make sure to give that a shout out. Very true. Very well stated, Dr. Adam Rota. I appreciate that a lot. And, uh, you know, they deserve that great company. But definitely, uh, those of you watching can uh, throw your support uh, to uh, to us and to these great companies. And, uh, you know, you'll be glad you did. So uh, we still do have uh, uh, ten, nine minutes. And until well, let's, let's go into the next fight card uh, yes, after the, the 13th, so the 20th, actually. Right. Uh, we've, we've got, ooh, the, the, the main card is an exciting fight, too. Yes. Oh, so ooh, that's an exciting. We see what I'm pointing out, but we're yes. going to check these out. Yes. Um, Do you want to start from the top? Uh, no, let's actually let's start, start from the middle. Let's start right in the middle. One of our previous guests, uh, Juan Adams, going up against Greg Hardy. That yes. that's a big one for Juan. Yeah. Uh, you know, I everybody wants to see Hardy knocked out. Yes. I, I mean, let's just be real about it. Not a uh, popular guy, guy. He does not have the the most solid history when it comes to his personal life. No. Uh, for those of you who who don't know, you can just Google him and figure yeah. it out. Look, yeah. Greg Hardy NFL. Um, and you'll get a lot of stories. You'll know it. Uh, but Juan Adams is is actually one of these guys. It's funny when you were talking with David earlier. I was thinking, you know, Juan's one of those guys. Honestly, if he were to switch over to B- BKFC, he would be one of those guys that's above that weight limit because yes. he just stands so tall and he's just such a big bone yes, guy. He is cutting the one six two sixty six. He makes it, but he would much rather not. He would be a little stronger if they let him be two eighty five or two ninety. The Kraken is a big man. Great personality, big smile, super cool dude. Uh, yeah, I hope he's going to knock Greg Hardy in the next week. I think. Uh, I think he will too. Yeah, based off him being out wrestled by a really good uh, Canadian uh, wrestler from India um, in his last fight, in a fight still, I felt that Juan won. But 
excuse me, based off that, I think the Hardy uh, management team said, okay, this guy's coming off loss, let's take him. And uh, I think uh, I think Juan Adams is going to make that team regret that, the Kraken for the knockout against Greg Hardy. Uh, we have Irene Aldana now in at number nine at bantamweight going against Raquel Pennington, number five. That's an interesting matchup. Have you noticed, Adam, a lot of these matchups we're looking at over the next few weeks has kind of a little bit of an older veteran fighter with a lot of miles on them who's maybe not been on the most winning track against kind of a younger upcoming fighter who's maybe not quite like top five yet, but can be have you noticed it's kind of a Abs game? absolutely yeah. i have noticed that i also feel like there is a move by the ufc to try and bring in a new round of all-stars um I, I kind of feel like that's what they're pushing for wanted to it, maybe clear out the yeah, uh, the old bones a little bit clear out the old bones a little bit i mean everybody respects the veterans yeah even dana but <laughs> Listen, at the end of the day, I think there is a little bit of that going on. I've, I've seen this theme. Yeah, it's been going across my mind a lot yeah, lately. Is, it seems like they want... Are, are they trying to push the old bones out? Right. I think they are. I think they are. And it's almost like they're trying to say, hey, let's get a new crop of exciting, young, good-looking fighters in there who people can cheer for. Um, you know, I mean, I guess in every, in every sport, Father Time catches up with all of us. Now you have people like, uh, like Randy Couture and Dan Henderson that looked at Father Time and said, no, 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 you're not uh, catching up with me that quickly. And at 45, 46, 47 years old, they're still in there, you know, fighting. But for the most part, a lot of fighters uh, in their mid late thirties start to fall off uh, uh, the, the track they were on a little bit, not all, but here here we have Raquel Pennington. I, I don't know the ages here, but I would guess Raquel has got to be in her mid-30s, I would think, and Irene Aldana maybe her late 20s. Um, I think that Pennington certainly has experience at a higher level, but Aldana has fought uh, her share of tough opponents, and um, this is a tough fight. This is uh, kind of a... Uh, a, a uh, what's a bridge now what's the word i'm like a crossroads fight and i think uh pennington uh came up and, and 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 a lot of people were hoping expecting she would be really really competitive and possibly beat uh amanda nunez and she didn't get smoked she did a lot better than 95 percent of other fighters could do against the awesome lioness uh, Amanda uh, Nunes, but she definitely did, I think, lose every round, and that was over a year ago. Took a lot of damage and punishment there, and here she is back in action against Irene Aldana, who's been getting better and better, primarily a striker, but has learned a little bit of, obviously, she knows some ground, and she's her get, takedown defense is getting better. Um, I don't know. Well, I, I always tend to cheer for the older fighter, being a, a definitely older guy myself. I have nothing against either of these women. Um, I tend to like to delay father time as much as as much as possible. So <laughs> I, I would probably be happier to see Pennington win. But I think the youth and explosiveness. And the I was just gonna say, I think in this case, Aldana is gonna come in yeah. and, and really I dominate. So. Unless Pennington can can just get her down and keep her down, but I don't think that's gonna happen. Although it could, you know, definitely gonna be a tough fight though. But I have Aldana. Uh, Sam Alvey uh, from Team Quest, who was on our show, a really nice guy, got caught and stopped really early in his previous fight. I think it was against Jimmy Crute, and it was a questionable stoppage, and he was really frustrated. Um, Clinton Abru was that exact same hair mustache and beard as both uh kelvin gasolum and nazrat hopkarast or hackparast Hap and so i think now we not only have those two training in the same place but this uh, brew with that same shape of face and haircut and facial hair <laughs> so maybe that should be the new thing you see that adam on the yeah, right yeah i do I everyone's got to try to come in with that look with the chin strap yeah, yeah the chin yeah. strap with a but with a more square head and the hair like that <laughs> and then pretty much we can have a whole crowd of the same guy oh. in there fighting at all the divisions you, how I, awesome I, would that be I, <laughs> <laughs> if know. we hit 10,000 views on this show, everybody, I will sport a chin strap for the next four shows. There we go. If we can get, and sometimes we get, uh, we've actually got as many as 12,000 views within uh, a week or so of uh, our show being released. But on the average, the only way we're going to get above 10,000 views this time, on, on, and I'm talking regular. on Facebook yeah. for, for this episode, is if you guys help us get the word out by sharing the show. So if yeah. you want to see me come in and sport, and, and uh, I do not look in a, a chin strap, right. I will sport it and, and just pay homage to these guys that are trying to bring it back. 
Absolutely. And so you, I, guys... I, you know what? I think uh, <sighs> Sam's probably going to take this one. Yeah. Uh, not just because he was on so. our show. Yeah, I, I like I, Sam. He's such I, a nice guy. Smile. I think he is. And honestly, that last stoppage, uh, that it was, was quick. It was quick. As quick and a little too soon. Yeah. Uh, yeah maybe. I mean, yeah. it was it was questionable, but it, yeah. I, I guess I lean with the refs on it, but uh, Alvy's just so experienced. He knows what he's doing. Such a great fighter. Yeah, uh, I, I agree. He's going to come around. And I think he will. Just, uh, I think he will. Not quite the caliber that Alvy is. No, I agree. Now, here comes the battle of the legends at heavyweight. Andre Arlovsky, who's definitely in his 40s. Big Ben Rothwell, who if he's not in his 40s, he's just about to be in his 40s. Um, both big men. Andre Olovsky, I think, is probably in his 20th year in the sport. Literally 20th year, if not 18th or 19th year. Ben Rothwell, I think, has got to have 15 years uh, or so in the sport, having fought with the old PFL uh, amazing wars against uh, big country Roy Nelson there uh, to come up just short of being the PF. They're just so far into their careers, it's hard for me to really figure out which one I would go for it's in this so, one. It's, <laughs> it's, it's like, so tough. I you mean, guys are so far along. You're past your prime. Yeah, you're, uh, <laughs> but they're so rugged, tough guys, <laughs> yeah. and they're big and they're strong. Andre Olowski, the Belarusian, Belarusian from Belarus, but having made Chicago his home, I think, for at least a dozen years or more so, the Midwest represented there by the great uh, Belarusian fighter, uh, Andrei Olowski. The Midwest being represented uh, in full by the Wisconsin boy, a big Ben Rothwell. What a character he is with a kid with a laugh. Nah, ah, 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 <laughs> that he does, except he does it even louder and lower voice, uh, being a much bigger guy than myself. But, uh, but man, you gotta love that fight. I think that, that Andre's chin has gotten stronger and are more determined as as in the last few years when there was some question about it before. But um, Rothwell possibly has the better chin. He's a little bit taller, a little bit longer fighter. Um, conditioning, even though he's never been a, a body guy with a six pack, he's definitely getting in better condition uh, as the years went by. I think he made a big improvement in his cardio uh, about seven or eight years ago. And uh, and what do you call him? Arlovsky, always in shape. Really tough one, man. I both are old veterans, man. I just don't know in that one. I I I, I, I don't even want to pick. I just I, I wish they could both win, but uh, it's gonna be <laughs> a great fight. Yeah, I, don't think it's I mean, they're they're great guys, tough guys, and uh, very interesting characters, both of them. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's too close to call in, yeah. in my opinion. I, I think is. it might even come down to a decision. Uh, yeah, and that, for a heavyweight, that's kind of surprising, but I. I think these guys man eh, no it won't be a decision it's just going to be whoever gets lands i think that power I, I think that brothel will come in maybe 15 pounds heavier and about two inches taller uh i think he may have more confidence in his chin so i think he's going to be looking for some of these bombs and arlovsky i think is going to be looking to kind of stick and move um so it's going to be interesting uh all right above that i like say olenek uh i believe he of the uh, frequent uh, Ezekiel choke submissions um, is going to be uh, against Harris. Forgive me if I'm wrong on that. There are a few different fighters that have a different, different, some similar name, Ola Menchuk and Olenek and, and a couple other guys uh, of the great tough fighters from the Eastern Bloc. So forgive me if I'm wrong on that, but I, I think it's Olenek that does keeps doing the Ezekiel I, choke. I, th I think um, you're right, actually. Yeah, yeah. And, but also a good striker. Walt Harris, the big show, big, strong, tough guy. Uh, and I think... Uh, I, I I think Harris wins that fight, but I wouldn't I, be surprised if not. I, I know Walt well enough, but yeah. Olenek, I, I I don't know. I, he's not somebody yeah. I've actually followed that yeah. much. And uh, then we have the, the main big event. Yeah, the main big event. fight, the main event is a super exciting one. Yes. I'm actually going to go with the underdog on this one. Just uh, I'll let you kind of spill the beans on, on who it is for those of you who don't know, but uh, I'm going with the underdog on this one, Colin. Okay, and I, the last time I looked at the odds were a couple days ago, but I believe the underdog you mean would be Rafael Dos Anjos. Yeah. Yeah. So the former lightweight champion, this fight's at welterweight, of course, the former lightweight champion, ranked number three in the world, uh, Rafael Dos Anjos, known as RDA, uh, going against Leon Edwards from England, a very, very tough and successful fighter, most notable for his altercation uh, behind the scenes with uh, Jorge Masvidal. Uh, over in England after Masvidal stopped Darren Till, but also notable for some big wins uh, last uh, most recently against, excuse me, the Icelander Gunnar Gunny Nelson. Um, 
I think I'm going to go for the, the dog here as well. Uh, this is going to be a really big test for Leon Edwards. Now, Leon Edwards can also say that Gunnar Nelson is a naturally bigger guy than RDA and is also an extremely skilled guy and a very good grappler. All, and he wasn't. But you're talking about RDA here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> RDA is the better wrestler. RDA, I think, maybe the harder puncher. And I think that RDA is really good about changing levels and coming in and shooting hard and and making his attack grappling based if need be based on the opponent. And I think an opponent five inches taller than him or four inches taller than him as this fighter is is going to be that opponent. I think that Gunnar Nelson uh, does come out frequently with that uh, Conor McGregor stance and is kind of ready to throw uh, hands and, and less worried and, and not a necessarily a traditionally great, great wrestler, although a good grappler. And I, I think he just, he, he, he tried to stay comfortable and be comfortable uh, on his feet against a guy who is primarily a striker in Leon Edwards, and that was a mistake. I don't think RDA is going to make that same mistake. So I have, uh, yeah, Slate Dog, uh, Rafael Dos Anjos, RDA. For yeah, the win. yeah, RDA for the yeah. win, and it's yeah. uh, I have a feeling submission. Oh, it could very well be, could very well be. Yeah, it's gonna be exciting though, that's for sure. And all right, so we're about three minutes away from our next guest. Do we wanna? You wanna get working on that? And I'll uh, say some interesting I, things. I've got everything all ready to go. So, uh, just real quick. Uh, I didn't throw it out a couple minutes ago. CrossTrainMMAFighter.com. You see the logo in the bottom left hand, left hand or right hand corner. It was there a second ago. I'm saying left because I'm pointing the wrong direction here. I have to point to the left for me. Anyways, down there, CrossTrainMMAFighter.com. Uh, they have some awesome t-shirts over there. Uh, what would it take for us to get these t-shirts up over there? That might be a good place for us to go ahead. That's and a good them. idea. Yeah. Let's, let's do that. We'll get them up right. over there, uh, and, and I can help with that, Colin. But, uh, yeah, make sure to go on over to CrossTrainMMAFighter.com, pick up the MMA Power Hour t-shirts, give us uh, a week to do that. Uh, and then also uh, the CrossTrain MMA Fighter uh, t-shirts are their awesome, awesome quality t-shirt it's it's the same quality t-shirt that i'm wearing right now and and i i'm just constantly wearing these shirts i work out in them i i wear them to mow the lawn i yes. don't have a lawn here but uh, <laughs> he does something he, he mows something I, here and, uh, well i i set up the studio and all these it it's a workout to move everything around in the studio it's kind of a black box so everything gets moved around absolutely but uh yeah excellent apparel i i would recommend getting some if you haven't yet Thank uh you. also Give us some shares. We could definitely use that help yeah. right now. We, we hate to be those guests that, uh, not guests, but those people put up videos that go, okay, you jackasses, share, 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 share. We'll do, <laughs> share, 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 <laughs> share, share. Let's get on it. Let's get on it. Let's get a wanna, contest. Yeah. See who we, can, we're not going to say that. Who yeah. can share to the yeah. most yes. groups? Exactly. Whoever right. shares to the most groups, yes. I'm going to give you a t-shirt. There we go. There we How about go. that? That's Are we deal. okay with that? We can do that. Let's do that. We Whoever do that. shares to the most groups, or it, it gives us the most shares. I'll be able to see it. I, I'll count it out. Whoever does that and gets a free t-shirt. There we go. And also, some of you, if you want a great quality t-shirt, I'm talking highest level, not those crappy t-shirts that feel stiff and make your body look worse than it is. The t-shirts that are comfortable, make your shoulders pop, make your chest pop, give a little space in the stomach so you do look in better shape than you are. And money goes to a good cause, namely me and the bills that I have to pay and give people <laughs> on our show and like that. It would be great. If you wanted to hit us up, if you need a deal, if you're struggling, talk to me. I can try to make a deal uh, for the T-shirts. But honestly, at 20 bucks or 25 bucks or whatever, they're still a great deal. Uh, but hit me up. Let me know. Our next uh, guest we should work on, Dr. Adam Rutter. Remember, this is indeed the man that taught Elon Musk absolutely everything he knows about business. So uh, those of you who want a uh, business consult, uh, you might want to get in touch with him because uh, he also gave uh, Mark Zuckerberg the idea for Facebook. And so, I, you know, I, none of this is true, by the way. I, I do business is, is it, consulting, but none of this is true. In England, then someone would say, have I, have I been given some duff information? <laughs> what happened? I, I don't know who gave you that duff information. Somebody gave me duff information, mate. Anyway, listen here. Now, what is going on with this guest and not answering? This is terrible. Let me, uh, let me uh, let him know that we're contacting him. We're Skyping him here. There we go. There we go. Did you there pick up? Is. Yeah, he did. 
There you go. There he is, Adam. I should, let me give you. What's good, party people? How are you? Perfect. We're doing great. Let me give you a proper introduction on the on the air, ladies and gentlemen. This next guest is one of my favorite MMA reporters. Uh, I always like to bring humor into it, uh, which I will. But honestly, I I, I love having him uh, on the show to talk to. He knows this sport like the back of his hand. Uh, some people feel that if we're caught in the woods, we can't see the forest for the trees and we can't see the light. This man brings you back into the woods, but it's the best woods you've ever been in. And uh, we're talking about Mr. Adam Woods himself. How's it going, Adam? Oh my gosh, that was pun heavy and the greatest injection that I uh, have ever had. <laughs> uh, and again, I'm the less cosmetically appeasing Adam. That goes. Uh, that distinction goes to Dr. Adam Rota. So uh, I love it. That, but uh, but uh, here's a guy with a face for radio, and uh, thank you guys for. Uh, letting me on my pleasure adam is always glad to have you glad to be among two adams and uh we are really looking forward to breaking this down man and so uh, without further ado as they say let's get into this ufc 239 how excited are you about this card i'm i'm really excited i mean first off you've got the distinction at the top of the card of uh arguably the two greatest uh male and female uh, mixed martial artists ever in the sense of Amanda Nunes yep. and John Jones competing on the same card uh, in title, you know, in, in title bouts like that doesn't happen often. No, and I think when we look back on it, it is going to be one of the most historic cards that has ever been. Um, so I mean, the and the uh, the visibility that this will bring to both of them and. Uh, I mean, they're uh, in Holly Holm and uh, Diego Santos. I mean, they're facing pretty big competition, but I mean, they, these are legacy fights for both. Yeah. And it, it's amazing. And then, I mean, when you're talking legacy, I mean, you've got, oh my gosh, you've got Robert Melendez on the undercard? Like, yes. Is this even, is this even real? Yeah, like, it's, it's crazy. Birthday come, I mean, birthday come early, Christmas come early everything absolutely absolutely a packed pack card and just i couldn't be more excited as well and you're right i mean john jones a multiple time uh ufc light heavyweight champion uh amanda nunez one of the very few only handful of champ champ or double champs holding uh, both titles at the same time and i'll come back and touch on that uh with you uh soon now are you frozen is that uh, there we go there's adam woods okay good you're not and so yeah it's it's gonna be super exciting so let's jump into uh some prelims here and i don't hope i'm not surprising you on this i don't always go over prelims but listen to this in the first fight i'm seeing julia avila who i'm not that familiar with coming with a six and one record against Panny kianzad Panny kianzad is a very very tough fighter and uh she uh, uh just came up a little bit short in the finals of the ultimate fighter uh against our friend and and multiple time guest uh, macy chasson and uh and uh no no uh, shame in that as macy is in my opinion going to be a future champion but Panay kianzad very tough i don't know if this fight is going to be at featherweight or at uh at uh, bantamweight if you do let me know but otherwise i just don't know enough about julia avila but i just really want panny to win she's just fought so hard against so many good fighters and i think this might be the spot that uh, she's going to shine uh let me know and, and you can be honest if you don't know much about avila as i don't then you can gloss over this or if you do go no, ahead and this give, is actually, give me him. this is actually right up my alley i actually used to train with julia at uh, Matt Baker BJJ in Bakersfield when I first started doing jiu-jitsu. Oh, you're kidding. So, uh, yeah, no, no. I know Julia well, the Raging Panda. Um, uh, I mean, aside from her fight acumen, again, 6-1. and one, She's won two regional titles in Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. um, she moved out to Oklahoma with her, her husband, Cody, uh, because they are, I believe, engineers of some sort, some min mineral engineering and what have you. And they took a really good opportunity in uh, Oklahoma. They're from uh, the central coast of California, um, but they they hail uh, Oklahoma as home. And uh, I mean, she's a, a two-time regional champion in terms of bantamweight, um, as well as a Invicta veteran. Um, and uh, I mean, Penny, like you said, you know, uh, Penny went against Macy in the Ultimate Fighter finale. And, um, I mean, she found herself on the outs of the organization. And, um, 
you know, the opponent that they had for Julia actually ended up getting injured. So, um, uh, Panny came in uh, late, I, I want to say three weeks ago. And, um, you know, this is her kind of ascension back into the UFC. Um, this is the fight that I love. Uh, to me, I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to stand out. Um, you know, it's a sleeper hit of the summer because obviously uh, both gals, if you're not inclined, aren't well known. They're not household names, but um, they've got a lot to prove. Obviously, uh, like I said, with uh, Julia, in Julia's case, she's a two-time regional champion, six and one, right? Um, so there's, you know, she feels that this is what she's worked so hard for, right? They're her first distinction of being in in the UFC. Now with Patty, again, she's been there before. She knows what the bright lights can do. Uh, she knows her ability, and then almost be, finding herself outside of the the uh, the organization and uh, having her last couple fights outside the organization. Again, she's got something to prove. She's got a chip on her shoulder, and that chip sometimes is the greatest thing ever, right? Yeah, um, yeah. It pushes you to bounds that you don't know. So this one, I think, is I mean, they, both women have a lot to prove. They are high-level athletes. Um, and just because you don't know their name now, uh, that'll all co change come uh, 10 p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time on Saturday night. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be exciting. Do you want to remain on the fence? And you're not forced to make picks if you don't have any, because I'll be on the fence on a couple of them myself. But do you, do you think you're getting I'm going it? with the Raging Panda. That's a, that's a sister. And she makes a really good uh, vegan jerky, by the way. Nice. Uh, so uh, there's that. There's a little caveat there. But uh, I'm going with the Raging Panda. I love it. The Raging Panda. That's awesome. Julia Avila. We'll see what happens. Do you know, is that going to be at Featherweight or Bantamweight? Do you know? Can you tell? I believe it's, I, I thought it was Feather, but I, I mean, uh, I could be wrong. Um, I've been known to be that a couple times. As it, sometime yeah. myself as well. Well, either way, we'll see. It's going to be exciting. I know that uh, in the graphic here on the UFC uh, app, it shows Panny Kianza uh, ranked in a woman's Featherweight, but that doesn't mean that's what the what the fight's at. But we'll see. Next I one. Think I think it is Bantam because I think they're dropping. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And and your friend Avila probably was Bantam, or do you remember at all? I guess right, people absolutely. can fight at both. But yeah, we'll see. Okay, but uh, probably at Bantam. Then I see this Ismail Nordiev against a man with a great name here, the Chance Encounter. You know what that? If you take away the R, then this guy's name is Chance Encounter. Yes, and I'm not, I, I'm, not, what, I'm not trying to rip I, on him. I, uh, I discovered that caveat, and I laughed uh, for three minutes straight. Yeah, uh, it's really great. Isn't yeah. it great? I mean, what, you know, I mean, to say, you know, that's got to be some unique, a unique vibe that he has, being that his name, for the most part, is Chance Encounter. You know, you wonder if he's ever said, you want to have a Chance Encounter? I'm Chance Rencounter. So... <laughs> <laughs> that's a, this that's is, a t shirt uh, worth making. It, it uh, really is. Saying. Someone should get behind this guy. I mean, we, we have to have this guy, uh, you know, succeed. And then his message can be sometimes in life, when you don't have the confidence to go out there and get what you want to get, you may not be aware that the chance encounter you have will bring you all the peace, prosperity, love, and health that you needed. Ask me, I'm Chance Rencounter. <laughs> that's wow, a, uh, you went the philanthropic route because I was just saying, if he has a mean right hand, that's going to be a chance encounter with the uh, five knuckle shuffle. I like that. That might even be better. Well, together we both we've definitely got down uh, the great stuff, and uh, I think that uh, Chance Rencounter or Rencount might be the Black Eagle, and that is interesting as he's a white guy, but the Black Eagle, that's awesome. And Ismail Nurdiev is the Austrian Wonder Boy. So this is interesting here. Both have very good records. And uh, what uh, would be your analysis? And I'll go second this time. We can alternate. But what uh, do you feel we will see in this uh, fistic chance encounter on July 6th? This, for me, just some, based on what I said, I want him to knock him out with the right and say, hey, that was a chance encounter. Yeah. So that's, <laughs> <laughs> That's it, you know. I would love that. <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> what do you think? You said Michael Bisming out there. Chance for encounter. What do you say that? Hey, that was a chance encounter. 
piece. Yeah, exactly. I'm out. Yeah. That's, that's the post fight. That's the post fight. That would be awesome. No, he is the underdog here. And so Ismael and Nordiev, the Austrian wonder boy, um, you know, is, is the favorite. But who knows? Maybe Chance will be able to uh, say he left uh, the Austrian wonder boy. He left him wondering. Uh, and that's some more dad humor oh, for you. Bob, Bob, the drum roll, please. There we go. All right. So I think we both are hoping for chance encounter in this one, but it's going to be a tough fight. Uh, coming up then, we have Edmund Shabazian against Jack Marshman, undefeated middleweight, the golden boy, Edmund Shabazian. And I think he has Edmund fought around here in LA. I know you get to more of the regional shows than I do, but Edmund sounds almost like a guy that may have been fighting in the regional scene in LA, or am I not? correct on that Ab i know absolutely um famously he had a uh, a bit of a instagram and twitter war with uh blake bulletproof troop oh. an lfa veteran because uh he signed on the dotted line to fight at uh cxf the california extreme fighting which is now uh sean merriman's lights out extreme fighting yeah. um which they have to show on saturday mm -hmm. but yes he is a veteran of a uh, I believe he did LFA. I know for sure he did CXF. Um, at least two to three fights for them. But yes, he's uh, he's training at the Glendale Fight Club. I believe it is, and um, they're trained under the Big Edmund. His uh, brother also is a fighter. And yes, I've, I've seen Shabazian fight. He's a uh, he's a hell of a hand. Uh, but uh, you know what? Anything can happen. So this uh, in this particular instance, I'm. Uh, Betting against Shabazzian. Yeah, Marshman is a tough guy. I think he's going to want to uh, make the golden boy uh, the nail, and he'll be the hammer, being that his nickname is the hammer. Uh, but, yeah, the, the lights out is a good thing. Sean Merriman, I went to let that last fight. I saw you there. Uh, Fernando Gonzalez winning. Uh, those of you who go to those fights, there's great fights there. The, uh, the guy that you see walking around there organizing things uh, – that looks like it may be uh, 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 Valid Ishmael is actually the Armenian Valid Ishmael, uh, George uh, J. Bostromagian. Uh, that may not be a compliment, but he's a tough looking dude. He's a tough looking dude. Yes, and once in a while, some people have said that looks kind of almost like Valid Ishmael. George, probably a little bit better looking guy than Valid Ishmael, though. I don't want to say that in case Valid I'm, is watching. I'm, I'm going to go with you with that. He yeah. is a more uh, cosmetically but, appeasing. Yes, person. yes. But both very, very tough guys who uh, their normal look on their face is almost like, like I'm going to kill you. <laughs> but then you say, how you doing? They're like, oh, hey, how you doing, bro? I'm going to kill you. <laughs> no, that's just the face. I once saw George Washington uh, smile. Um, Did that, you? That, that, that's unusual. Yeah, it, it can be confirmed. It's here saying here nor there. Yes. But uh, so, I'm just saying that. Yeah, he's a, he's a really good guy. He's running around doing things and, uh, you know, but very nice guy. Even if he's mad, I, he'll just say something like, hey, try not to keep doing this, would you? All right, thanks. And, <laughs> all right. But look at his faces like that. Yeah, you do that again, you're, <laughs> he won't be seen or heard of again. No, but definitely really good guy, great group, and should be a great organization there, as uh, George has conducted in the past with his, uh, with his CXF. Anyway, uh, we are now moving on to, where are we? Now we are looking at uh, more uh, prelims, and we have Alejandro Perez. Am I wrong uh, about him, or was he just on a, uh, a, a a local show in the last month or so am i wrong yes, was it lfa was it was it a cxf or an lfa uh, i believe it was lfa that's right and he did win i think he just won the title about a month ago in lfa didn't right he? wow and so uh, right away they're bringing him back in the ufc that's awesome i'm really glad because he's a tough guy they matched him up against some very 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 tough guys some serious killers and then when he didn't beat them they they gave him his walking papers and so i like that off of a really good performance in the lfa where i was uh, there to see it in person he actually beat uh, i think uh, an olympic wrestler i forget the guy's name but uh, a really good guy and it was an excellent performance um no it wasn't it wasn't olympic wrestler you know what i'm mixing up perez with uh with uh brandon moreno 
Brandon okay, Moreno. Yeah, okay. yeah he won yeah. an LFA. Although they should bring him back to the UFC as well, too. I'm absolutely stunned that he would have left. But anyway, Perez is a tough guy. I think maybe Perez was at the CXF. I don't know. But a very, very tough guy. 22 7 1 out of Mexico against Song Yedong. And he's 14 4 0 against China. Man, there, there have been some really good fighters, both men and women, coming out of China lately, haven't there? Absolutely. That's why, I mean, uh, Dana White has famously said in, in uh, recent interviews where that is where they want to set up a, a performance institute in, you know, in Asia, um, specifically China, because there's so much good talent uh, there. I mean, and ingrained in the culture is martial arts. So you've got, you, you know, both male and female, you know, athletes that have been training since they were like five, you know, in uh traditional martial arts and they can adapt pretty well to MMA. So uh, I don't see why that doesn't become a superpower in the sport of MMA like Brazil did in the early 2000s. Absolutely. And and I think with uh, one championship based in Singapore, I know they're grabbing up a bunch of Chinese fighters, but I know that a bunch of Chinese fighters also want the opportunity to come over and fight in the UFC. But um, do you know that there is a great MMA journalist there who calls himself the Chinese Adam Woods? Ah, really? I got, no, I was kidding. But one day there will say, be. There, there will I be would one love day. To see the character. <laughs> is it written in Sanskrit? Well, I tell you what. But one day, I know, right? One day there will be because you will, you are going to keep getting bigger and better with the great interviews you're doing, man. And uh, I'm all, all. 100% impressed and, and behind you. But anyway, sorry to not give you a chance to answer on that one. But Alejandro Perez, Song Yedong. I'm at a little bit of a loss with Song Yedong, not having had the time to research him. Uh, have you beat me on that one as usual, or uh, are you not quite that familiar with Song Yedong on the, yeah, that matchup? I saw, I saw his name, and it's worth the price of admission. I'm, that is my pick. Spoiler alert, because, I mean, uh, I would just love for Bruce Ruffer to go, and your winner, Sam Yadong. Yes. That's it. And then he That's can it. say, and then he can say, hey, I did this and it only cost you the price of a song. You yes, know, Yadong. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> the dong. That's it. But da dong. That's it. He said, I, I, I finished that with an exclamation point. A dong. Anyway, that's enough. All respect for these guys. This is silly dad humor. Got to throw in once in a while, I guess, because no one else does. And I appreciate that Adam uh, Woods and Dr. Adam Rorta both indulge me in that. Adam, I, I, I have to jump in real quick, guys. There's actually a restaurant in Des Moines, Iowa. It's one of the best Vietnamese restaurants in the world. Uh, it's called Adong. Just, just, just nice. had, to, had to throw it out there. I love it. I love it. Well, you know, that's what it is, man. Song, Yadong, Adong, Song. He's going to make a song out of this. And, uh, and I think, uh, though, that he may try to make a song out of it. But I think that Alejandro Perez uh, Turbo wins that fight. But we'll see what happens. Now we'll get on to some fights that people are more familiar with. Claudia Gadelia. <laughs> there we go. Right. Claudia Gadelia is going up against Ron Randa Marcos. That's Claudia Claudinia. Gedelia against Randa Marcos. When I hear Randa, it reminds me of that great cartoon. Remember that cartoon of MMA animation about seven or eight years ago where George St. Pierre was a police officer and his partner in the car was Nick Diaz? Yes. That was freaking hysterical. And then that was when Ronda Rousey was still fighting. <laughs> George is saying he really likes his girl, Randa, and then Diaz goes, who the heck is Randa? And he goes, it ran the Rousey. And she goes, oh, you mean Ronda, my bad. <laughs> you guys got to look for that. That was really funny. It was like 2012 or something. Alistair Overeem in there. And I think Valid Ishmael was in a funny scene uh, in that also. But um, anyway, this really is Randa Marcos. Uh, and she is one of the very few... Um, uh, Chaldean fighters out there and I grew up with a really good Chaldean neighbor super super cool dude and uh, in Michigan there's a really good Chaldean community and I think in San Diego as well and uh, but not a large amount of, uh, of people left and they're really wonderful people and uh, Random Marcos I think is the highest ranking fighter of Chaldean uh, background and she is known as Quiet Storm really good wrestling came up with a big win in her last fight I forget who it was against um, but uh, this is a tough one Randa's been been kind of on the upswing uh claudia has kind of been a little bit on the downswing although no shame for her to lose to uh a a prime nina Ansaroff, who then subsequently gave tatiana suarez 
the hardest fight that I think anyone has ever ever given uh, Suarez by far. So I don't know. Um, big, big, important fight. We've got uh, Claudia ranked number five at straw weight. Uh, Randa number fourteen. Uh, what do you think, man? I, I, I think it's going to be a really tough fight. They both got good grappling. They're grappling. They're both strong girls. I don't know who's striking is better. Uh, I think this is going to be a grinding fight. Uh, it's either going to be kind of a stalemate where they kind of, you know, keep neutralizing each other, which I hope not, or it's going to be some really, really good, you know, powerful, you know, bust them up, you know, grinding on the feet, on the ground, on the feet, on the ground, back and forth. Uh, what do you see? Uh, how do you see that fight unfolding? Uh, what do you think will be interesting to look for in that matchup? And then a prediction if you have one. Well, for for me, I mean, just the, the pedigree and the prestige of uh, both fighters, you know, obviously Randa Marcos uh, being a part of the strawweight, uh, the initial strawweight uh, division by way of the ultimate fighter, she was on that season. Um, so, I mean, her her heritage, you know, uh, uh, what is the, the country? Uh, Caledonia? Uh, yeah, no, well, no, it's... Uh... The country, it's and they're in the Middle East, and I wish I know more. It's been years since I since I talked to my neighbor, but I think they're a they're a Middle Eastern Christian background group, and uh, so I don't know the exact country where the Chaldeans were from, but I know it's in, in the Middle East, and uh, we can see if we can do a little bit of. So I think it's a ch, uh, but but right. yeah, but yeah, so there, I, I, yeah. I remember on on the Ultimate Fighter, um, you know, she she her and her family were refugees. Uh, to Canada, and that's where she yes, spent yes. a lot of her, for Absolutely, her formative yeah. years. Yes, and uh, I mean, geez, you know, being a part of that, you know, that initial season, the season, you know, and what the straw weights, you know, have become, you know, uh, obviously, um, gosh, I, I'm forgetting, Carla Esparza winning that season, right? Yeah. Um, so she was, I mean, literally. The way that people became acquainted with the UFC, UFC strawweight division is by way of that season, um, and Ronda Marcos was a part of that. You know, like to me, historic season because yes. before that, the only prominent uh, promotion was Invicta that had that division. So uh, it's it's awesome to see her uh, first on the upswing one, and again with her heritage. You know, how many people that are kind of struggling from her heritage. Uh, get to live vicariously through her mm -hmm. come Saturday night. So yes. it's an amazing story. Now, on the other side of the, the spectrum, you've got uh, Claudia. Claudia is a former title contender uh, facing uh, Joanna Yon Jacek uh, at yep. her time at top. Yep. And uh, I, I mean, this is a gritty fight if there ever was one. And uh, this also might be a sleeper hit. You know, I'm, uh, I'm pegging the two you know, lower card uh, female fights as, you know, aside, I mean, you know that the, you know, 1A, 1B are going to be bangers, but, you know, for the undercard, these are sleeper hits for my fights of the night. Yeah. Um, yes. And, 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 you know, you don't think that Claudia has something to prove. I mean, her, yeah. her last couple outings haven't gone her way. So again, there's a chip in the shoulder. And when you have that chip, I mean, uh, you can do the impossible. You make the impossible possible, and uh, that's what you're looking for Claudia to, to do. Now, in terms of neutralizing, that's a great point that you, uh, you brought up earlier, Colin, because essentially um, this could but go by way the route of a Wonder Boy Thompson, Tyrone Woodley, because, I mean, they are so evenly matched and so skillful that you can look to, for them to be timid maybe the first round, first round and a half, um, and you don't know what's going to happen, but uh, th this I I won't say a pick, but this could go to a decision. But it is going to be a dogfight if there ever was one, without a doubt. Now we've got about ten more minutes and about seven more fights. So on the lesser known fights, give me only maybe twenty seconds so that we will have a minute and a half on each of the bigger fights. So here, even maybe less than twenty seconds. Marlon Vera has got a last second opponent. He was supposed to fight Sean O'Malley. Uh, now he's got uh, Nohelan Hernandez. Uh, I don't see that being an issue for Marlon Vera. I think Cheeto Vera all day in that one. What do you think? 
I'm I'm right there with you. He's a Timo Yama guy. I'm going with Cheeto. Yep. Uh, Gilbert Melendez bringing back El Nino, underdog to Arnold Allen from England, who's 14 and one. I hate to see Gilbert brought back as some sort of a. Uh, a gatekeeper or stepping stone. The odds makers feel that's the case. I may be wrong to, to say I'm picking him. Uh, I guess I will anyway, though, and I'm cheering for uh, El Nino Gilbert Melendez. I don't think he'll be a walkover, though, for anyone, but I'd love to see him win there. Any feelings real quick? The, the winningest fight, uh, fight streak in uh, Strike Force history, as well as the longest layoff uh, in MMA history. But uh, you can't get go against any one of the scrap hat guys so uh gilbert melendez all the way yep absolutely okay main card here we have one where are we we're going to be talking about one two three four five fights okay let's go to number five and i can you can give me maybe a minute or so on each of these diego sanchez against michael chiesa uh diego sanchez leaving jackson wink here after what 15 or 20 years um it is what it is. Uh, Diego uh, looking good in his last fight, which was awesome. Love to see these old school guys do it. The man was in Ultimate Fighter number one. Uh, don't see how he gets by Michael Chiesa. Chiesa in that one. Yeah, it's a, it's a strange one because they just released uh, a, a reunion of sorts on the UFC YouTube channel about uh, the you know reuniting the cast of the first Ultimate Fighter. And Diego Sanchez is the only active competitor of them all, which I thought was, including the coaches, you yep. know? So I thought that was a crazy statistic. Um, Chiesa, I mean, obviously, if it goes to the ground, it's Chiesa all day. Um, but, I mean, you, uh, you know what? Diego Sanchez has a puncher's chance, and he's not going to go down easy. So, I mean, you literally have to take it down. Um, I, I like the old guard, so I'm going with Sanchez. Yeah. I like it. I hope uh, I hope he can. Well, either way, they're both good guys. I don't care who wins. I'd love to see a close fight. Uh, I know that uh, my co-host here, Adam Rorta, had uh, thought that maybe Kiesa wins by submission. I don't believe anyone's ever submitted uh, Diego Sanchez. Am I right? No, but I don't believe so. Um, I, I mean, he's going to go out on the shield, so you're going to have to choke him out. Right, um, literally, you have to put him unconscious. And he's a black belt. He's a good black belt. So I don't know that Kies is going to try to do that, although Kies does love to get that backpack position and uh, does love the rear naked choke and is a really good wrestler. He's a better wrestler. He's a younger guy. He's a longer fighter. Uh, but it's going to be interesting to see what he thinks because trying to submit someone who's never been submitted is is a challenge, I guess, if you can hurt him first. But we'll have to see. Uh, okay, uh, so uh, Jan Blachowicz against Luke Rockhold, the man from Poland, is uh, welcoming uh, Luke Rockhold, the model by day and fighter by night. Really great fighter, though. Um, many years at AKA. I think he may still be there on occasion, but mostly is not he's somewhere else nowadays but um uh tough one there i i, I think uh, a not depleted luke rockhold should be should be really strong i don't think he's that old and i don't think there's too many miles on him um jan blahovich though looking sharp as attack until he ran into what well, the freight train that is uh tiago maheta santos in his last fight and there's no shame in losing to him because John Jones himself may actually lose to Mahetta Santos. We'll talk about that in a minute. But I don't know. This is going to be a hell of a fight because I know that Blahowicz doesn't want to have two losses in a row. Um, I think it may be the coming out party at light heavyweight for the brand new uh, light heavyweight uh, fighter in Luke Rockhold. And I think a party it will be. Got Luke Rockhold in a hard fight uh, in that one. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, you know, Jan is a, a power puncher. Um, not to say that there is any, any skill behind it. There is a lot of technical skill. But, I mean, when it comes down to it, he bites down on the mouth guard and just swings for the fences. So um, as the the fight goes on, you have to give the advantage to Luke Rockhold, who's, you know, training with uh, at, during his tenure at AKA with, uh, obviously, Habib. DC, you know, all of those world-class wrestlers there. Yep. Um, he's training in South Florida with Henry Hoofs. So, um, my goodness, y yeah, uh, a not depleted Rockhold is a scary thing. Um, and ulterior motive, uh, he's looking at Jones. So, he just has to get through Jan first. Yeah, should be a really, really tough fight. Any picks on that one or are you on the fence? 
Yeah, I'm going with Rockhold. Yep, I like that. I think it's going to be a good fight. I think you'll take it. Okay, we can go maybe uh, between us, maybe two minutes for each of these last three fights on each, if that. A minute and a half, two minutes. Um, we are talking about fight number three. Uh, Jorge Gamebred Mas Vidal against Funky Ben Askren. Let me go first. Man, is that going to be an interesting fight. Funky coming into his second UFC fight. In his first UFC fight, he got thrown on his on his head almost and uh, given a pretty serious shellacking by ruthless Robbie Rawlaller until on a scramble he caught him in a bulldog choke, which was disputed, not disputed, but a little bit controversial as far as as when the referee stopped it, but I think people are over it at this point. Uh, maybe not uh, Lawler, but he seemed to have handled it well. Strong guy, uh, but maybe perhaps stop, stop slightly earlier. In any case, you have a probably a little bit of a fresher, a little bit of a younger fighter in a Jorge Masvidal than Robbie Lawler. Not the same fighter, maybe not as physically strong or big, but more on top of his game. And a lot of people think he'll take off where... Uh, pick up where Lawler left off. I think he has a very good chance, and it's going to be about how he can keep the distance between uh, him and uh, Funky. How do you see that fight unfolding? What do you think are going to be key factors above what I said? And then a prediction. Give it all to me in about a minute or a minute and change if you can. This is a, a classic striker versus wrestler, you know, and uh, obviously Masvidal, uh, coming out of the Kimbo Slice kind of school of hard knocks in South Florida. So um, this goes to the ground. It's going to be Askren all day long, right? But um, to do that, he, I mean, Master Dahl is no slouch on the ground. So um, he's got to eat some shots. And I don't know, even though Ben Askren hasn't taken too much damage throughout his uh, undefeated career, um, once... He, you know, Masvidal touches his chin. It's a scary thing, and I don't know if Ben is ready for that. So uh, that's it. Yeah. I may be going for the dog also in uh, in Masvidal in that one too. I think he has a good chance, and uh, the winner will definitely – there will definitely be title ramifications for the winner. Like, uh, like uh, Funky likes to say, I win, I fight Marty next for the title as he calls uh, <laughs> Kamar Moose. But uh, it's going to be interesting to see that. Ben Askren is an interesting-looking guy, isn't he, though? Some uh, some people look similar. I don't see anyone that looks just like Ben Askren. Do you? No. Um, I mean, uh, pedigreed wrestler, looks like a Muppet, um, cool as a cucumber, and has got innate ability almost in the vein of Chael Sonnen yeah. um, in terms of talking people into the fights. And it's about a butt in every 18 inches. So, yep. Yep. Um, yeah. It's definitely exciting. Okay. The last two fights, uh, please make it just one minute and I'll, I'll give you a quick 20 seconds first. Uh, Amanda Nunez against Holly Holm, the lioness against the preacher's daughter. Champion is about a three to one favorite. Uh, the champ champ, they're letting that featherweight title be tied up as well pending this result so it's going to be interesting to see what's going to happen with this one because you know we have felicia spencer who was a guest on my show a couple weeks ago uh, uh going up against chris cyborg not for the title uh pending what amanda's going to do with the featherweight title uh interesting anyway um i think holly holm has a good chance in this one i think she's going to frustrate amanda uh, nunez it's going to be a tough tough fight i got holly holm in the upset here and what's going to be an interesting strategic fight at points may be boring at points but will have its share of excitement i think and i hope give me a give me a minute or slightly less on that we i'm going with nunez all day arguably the i mean no not arguably she is the greatest female mixed martial artist combat sports athlete of all time um and i just think she just uh uh, puts another head on her mantle in Holly Holm. Uh, she's the uh, she's the quintessential legend killer, and she does it again uh, July 6th at T-Mobile Arena. Are you feeling it ends with uh, Inside the Distance? Um, no, I think this is going to be a knockout. I mean, um, so you do but, feel in you know, inside Holly, the distance. Yeah. Holly could just as well frustrate her, you know, and the knockout could go Holly's way, but, uh, I mean, it's got to take a lot to do, and it's a surprise 
kick almost all around that. So there yeah. you go. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. I wish we had more time to flesh that out, but I think we both know it's going to be an interesting fight, and we're on the opposite side on that. I think it's going to be fun. Uh, John Jones defending his title, Bones, against Maheta Tiago Santos. Uh, I think we can let you go a full minute or so on here. I'll go about 30 seconds here. I do believe uh, Tiago Santos brings more punching power than anyone John Jones has ever fought. Um, mm -hmm. If John had fought Rumble Johnson, then I'd say not. But being that he didn't, this is going to be the hardest hitter. He's fought unorthodox guy, very strong guy, doesn't have a huge grappling background, but his balance is very good. Being a, 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 a master of capoeira, I think, or at least a high-level capoeira guy, very good hands, very interesting movement. I watched a breakdown with Dan Hardy and the other British guy uh, a, a while back, and it showed that uh, he just does really interesting things with his movement and his footwork. Um, if he's taken down and continuously taken down or kept down, can he get beaten and it'd be uneventful for John Jones? That could happen. Don't don't see that happening. I like John Jones a lot. I'm picking the upset here in Maheta, Tiago Santos. How do you think the fight plays out? Uh, what might be interesting to look for? And then a prediction if you have one. So every promo, every bit of footage on Santos, uh, I'm all like, that's impressive. That's impressive. Oh my gosh, he's got so much power. But, you know, here's the thing. Jones beat DC twice, right? Um, I believe it was uh, Gustafson and Anthony Smith both saying they they could figure out Jones. They were the, the, the glitch in the matrix that nobody else could figure out. And look at what John Jones did to both of them. Uh, so to bet against Jones, oh, I don't know. You know, again, this is a legacy deal for him. Uh, he's trying to quell the rumors about him going up to heavyweight um, by, you know, facing, I mean, cleaning out the division in light heavyweight, and it goes through Santos. Like, but here's the thing, much like we saw with uh, uh, Francis last week, you know what? If Santos uh, touches Jones' chin, I don't know if he could withstand that. So, uh that one's up in the air, but it's going to be a good fight. And uh, it's going to be, it's not going to go to distance one iota. That's going to be a knockout. Yeah, I think so for sure. To think that does not go the distance is going to be really exciting. Uh, in the last uh, 30 seconds so we have from you here, it's going to be a great card. Let us know again what uh, you are affiliated with as far as your great interviews. If it's more than one place, let us know how people can follow you because you're doing some amazing interviews and you keep getting better as the years go by. You're too kind, and uh, Colin and Adam are, are one of my idols, and they push me to more, so thank you guys. But uh, easy, easy as peasy, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, uh, according to Woods, that's what you're going to do it. On YouTube, it's going to be free admission media. I do a once-a-week a Tuesday night podcast, The Jim Crashers, along with John Arredondo. Uh, that goes live simultaneously on Facebook and YouTube at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on those uh, free admission media channels. And uh, it's always a fun time. It's always a fun time. But uh, guys, I appreciate this. You guys are amazing. Uh, this is According to Woods, and I'm on the MMA Hour. Fantastic. Oh, yeah. MMA Power Hour. So glad to have you here, Adam Woods. Keep up the great work, my friend. Great analysis. And uh, we look forward to talking again very soon. Likewise, guys. Enjoy the fights this weekend. Will do. You too. Take care, my friend. And that was Mr. Adam Woods, Dr. Adam Rorda. In the last two minutes, we have anything you want to say before I wrap things up? Thank you so much in advance. And after all the likes, comments, and shares, you guys mean the world to us. Uh, make sure to go on over to wordfighterhemp.com for all your CBD needs. Make sure to go on over to combatpress.com for all of your uh, fight news, uh, <clears throat> all combat sports related news. And also get on over to. Uh, <laughs> I'm having a brain fart. CrossTrainMMAFighter.com yep. to get a an awesome CrossTrain MMA Fighter uh, t-shirt or an MMA Power Hour t-shirt in the next week or two. Also, uh, I, I do want to emphasize following us on Instagram. We do have a lot of stuff going on there. We're going to uh, uh, restart one of the things that we were doing on there and keep it going, which is Khan's, uh, Khan's 
what was it? Best bets by Colin. Best bets, uh, correct. We'll and we're also going to do best bets by Adam since I'm starting to get picked up. So we'll kind of start a competition. We'll actually yes. have a score breakdown that is going to be coming to you probably this next season. But go ahead and get on over to the Instagram page just at MMA Power Hour, and uh, we'll, we'll be right there. And uh, maybe we'll find a way to get some of you involved with the competition, and uh, we can get something figured out with one of our sponsors and uh, supplying some sort of surprise trophy something at the end of the the season. Season. How does that sound to you? I like that. Okay, perfect. So we will just uh, uh, do that. Uh, I want to say thank you so much, Colin. As, yeah. as always, another great episode. Uh, some awesome breaking news uh, from uh, Mr. Feldman and Adam Woods always bringing the excellent breakdowns. So th thank you, everybody, for coming on and, and checking the show out. And I will catch you next week. I am handing it over to Colin. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Dr. Adam Rorta. As always, your contribution is invaluable. Uh, this man is the man that uh, made sure that uh, the Endeavor Group uh, actually embarked on that endeavor to take over the UFC. It was his idea. And uh, that's, how they, that, that's how they made that endeavor. And they liked the fact that he called it Endeavor so much, they changed their name from WME uh, IMG to Endeavor. So he's, he, he doesn't ask for any credit, though. And a lot of times, these big companies don't end up giving to him, but take my word for it. He's the one that came up with that idea. Anyway, uh, what I want to say is we have a great show coming up next week. I'm still in negotiation for some big, fun, exciting guests. We may have two or even three, and our contributors back also from England and from uh, Thailand will be back with us next week. So much great stuff. I want to say look out for yourself. Be kind to yourself. Be gentle to yourself. Uh, seriously, life can be stressful and hard and, and, and you know, challenging it's no longer a cold winter but it's a hot summer so treat yourself with love take care of uh of your pets treat them with love spread the love in a positive way be that guy be that girl look out for your friends neighbors co-workers and family it will come back to you tenfold make the world a better place all right so spread the love and uh you know and um be a good person and uh you know, we're all in this in this thing together, so let's look out for each other, right? That's about it for the entire staff here at the MMA Power Hour, Dr. Adam Rorta. This is Colin Crandall, and I am tapping out.